I would like to give a special thank you to the 45th President Donald Trump and his Supreme Court justice picks because affirmative action has been ruled unconstitutional. Affirmative action is a racist policy. I stand firmly against it, and I'm glad to see that the correct ruling was handed down. We'll see where this goes already. These universities are trying to find loopholes and workarounds to keep using race as a pretext for your admission into these schools. And it's and it's horrifying. You should not be able to use someone's race to determine whether or not they're able to go to a higher learning uh, facility. Not that I'm a big fan of colleges as it is, but this is an amazing ruling. And uh, we got to see how uh, uh, where it goes beyond just these universities. So it should be particularly big news. So we're going to be talking about that quite a bit. We do have a, a bit of other news, Donald Trump's response to this, as well as Dylan Mulvaney addressing the Bud Light fiasco. That's right, because Bud Light will uh, will always be in the news. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. But I do think the affirmative action thing is going to be uh, really, really big. Plus, there's a story about a whole bunch of celebrities signing up for this petition from GLAAD to get basically anybody who disagrees with them banned from the Internet. A lot of celebrities are signing on to this list. So we'll talk about that and, uh, and a whole lot more. Before we get started, my friends, head over to castbrew.com. Click the link in the, description, in the description below to buy our Cast Brew Coffee. Join the Cast Brew Coffee Club. If you like good coffee, you'll like ours, and it helps fight the commies because we are working towards building a parallel economy like so many other companies that believe in American values and meritocracy and individual liberties. Uh, many of these companies can be found in the Public Square app, which I strongly recommend. If you're looking for coffee, castbrew.com. It is our company, so you're supporting us and you're getting a good cup of joe. We got new flavors coming out, but I recommend, look, we got the Dark Roast Appalachian Nights. It's my favorite. And Rise with Roberto Jr., the Light Roast. Check them out. Don't forget to also go to timcast.com. Click that Join Us button. Become a member to support our work directly. And you can check out that members only uncensored show tonight after this show. Now, I want to add one quick thing after I say smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, share the show with your friends. The air is so insanely bad out here. It's, it's indescribable. Apparently, the D.C. area was rated one of the lowest air quality uh, uh, cities in the world. And today I wake up. There is a white haze so dense it looks cloudy on a sunny day. The, 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 the light that's coming through the windows is red and you, you can't breathe. It's even right now difficult to breathe indoors. We had to duct tape up the vents to make sure air is not getting in from the outside. It's really, really bad. And uh, I came in the studio this morning to, to record my morning show and uh, I couldn't talk. Literally couldn't do it. I was trying to just force air out of my lungs and I'm just like, I'm going to go lock myself indoors at home and then just try and uh, get my voice in shape to do the show tonight. And so uh, here we are and uh, doing a bit better, doing a bit better. But holy crap, is it bad? In fact, it's so bad. We got a warning about our chickens and had to transport them out of Chicken City into a temporary holding facility that's indoors to protect them from the air quality, which is going to be just as bad tomorrow. So I want to stress that, you know, it's, it's pretty nuts out there. I was driving back from uh, uh, grabbing lunch. Normally, when you're driving through this area, Blue Ridge Mountains, you can see layers of mountains off in the distance. You could not see any of them. It was just a white wall. That's how bad it is out here. So anyway, just to let you know how things are going on in that front, joining us tonight to talk about this and so much more is Alex Brusowitz. Great to be back, Tim. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm Alex Brusowitz. Go to DonaldJTrump.com and get a, a not guilty sh uh, shirt. Free my boy, DJT. Did nothing wrong. And uh, it's great to be back. Right on. What do you do? I own a political consulting company called X Strategies. Uh, I'm also a full-time uh, Twitter troll. We have a really good time on there. Uh, piss off a lot of people. Uh, but, you know, it's the beauty of America, right? You have the freedom of speech, and you can piss off whoever you want online. Right on. Well, we'll talk about that. So thanks for, for hanging out. We got Seamus hanging out. Good to have you back, man. My name is Seamus Coglin. I make cartoons on a YouTube channel called Freedom Tunes. We just released one today that I think you guys are really going to like. It's called The Pride Month That Wasn't. I think that this Pride Month went abysmally for the alphabet community, and it's been entertaining to watch, so I turned it into a cartoon. I think you guys will enjoy that if you go check it out. Oh, hi, everyone. Ian Crossland here. Happy to be back. Uh, it is a Thursday evening. Let's roll this thing. Yeah, let's get to it, Tim. This uh, sucks. My nose hurts. My mouth hurts. I'm really tired of this. I'm Surge.com. I woke up oh. sneezing today. It was great. Uh, Surge, I thought you were going to say you were upset about affirmative action. I am. That uh, happened in South Africa in 1998 uh, with the EE Act, and I've been dealing with it ever since. It got installed in 88, 98? I meant the, or, I meant the Supreme Court decision. Or, yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. Well, I've been obsessed. As an let's jump into that yeah. story. Uh -huh. All right, here's the story from TimCast.com. 
Supreme Court finds affirmative action unconstitutional, says school cannot consider race during admission. Chief Justice John Roberts wrote Harvard and UNC concluded wrongly that the touchstone of an individual's identity is not challenges bested, uh, skills built or lessons learned, but the color of their skin. The court ruled universities and colleges cannot weigh an applicant's race during the admissions process. The majority of the justices found affirmative action policies unavoidable, un unavoidably employ race in a negative manner, involve racial stereotyping and lack meaningful endpoints. We have never permitted admissions programs to work in that way, and we will not do so today, stated the court. Two appeals regarding the constitutionality of affirmative action have been appealed to the Supreme Court. One brought by the University of North Carolina was blocked six to three, and one brought by Harvard University was rejected six to two. Justice Kat uh, Katanji Brown Jackson did not vote on the latter. The ruling released on June 29th overturns a previous decision made in the Grutter v. Bollinger in 2003 at the time. The Supreme Court found that race could be weighed as a factor in admissions because universities had a compelling interest in maintaining diverse campuses. The Supreme Court is right. What you need to understand very, very simply is that in order for affirmative action to work, the assumption must be that certain races are inherently worse than other races, which is just not true. At least I don't believe our government should be operating that. I don't believe it, but I think the left absolutely does. I'm seeing a bunch of tweets from people on the left. The racism pouring out of these liberals brains is insane. Pe these people are tweeting things about like, well, how will how will minorities succeed now? Hard work and 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 yeah. what do you mean? The I don't same know. Way like, they always succeeded. Yeah. The same way so many merit. other immigrants who have come to this country have succeeded by working really hard and making a better future for their children. It's yeah. amazing, isn't it? Well, it's incredibly infantilizing. I've talked about affirmative action in the past. I've even done an, edu an educational video about it. And one thing I want to mention is, well, the obvious clear injustice with affirmative action and the thing conservatives should talk about most loudly is is not the soft bigotry of low expectation, but the fact that white students and Asian students are kept from having positions that they have merited because students who didn't merit those positions were given them on the basis of their ethnic makeup. It is also true that these policies are not good for minorities or people in these communities. So what will happen, and this is something Thomas Sowell's talked about, this is something we did a research video on for Freedom Tunes a while back. What happens is a black student will end up being placed in a classroom and in a school setting that is beyond his academic qualifications and so he'll end up dropping out more often because he isn't in a classroom that actually matches what his standardized testing scores tell us he's going to be capable of achieving academically so for example if you have a black kid who could get into a really impressive school but not necessarily harvard and then affirmative action bumps him up and puts him into harvard the likelihood that he's going to drop out of harvard is greater than the likelihood that he would have dropped out of the institution that he was more qualified to attend, and but, then he's less likely to get a degree. So, it's, but, but to clarify, mm -hmm. while you are correct in the context of this, they're, they're targeting minorities. Mm -hmm. What you're saying applies to literally any person of any race. If you yes. take, if you take any person of any race who scores low on an entrance exam, and then put them in a more advanced program, yes. they're likely to drop from that program. And so, what these programs were doing was was one basing the entire admission structure on on the on the on the idea that certain races just inherently and i mean it when i say inherent the left always tries to make the argument that when you're talking about race or crime stats they're like you think inherently no 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 the the pretext for affirmative action is inherent because they're saying all people they're outright saying that if you are asian you can't come into this school yeah. because you scored this on this test as if all asians are the same mm -hmm. yeah. so what ends up happening is their the Latinos and, and black Americans will score at a certain level and probably qualify for some good schools. And they'll say, put them in an Ivy League where they struggle, drop yeah. out and are worse off for it. Well, and it's such a strange thing. If your concern is that there's not enough minority representation in academia, then what you have to do is try to structure th things so that they're they're going through the public school system or whatever private school system is available to them in such a way that they end up being qualified to attend these institutions. You don't slap a Band-Aid over it by pushing them into institutions that they're not qualified to attend. I think the, the problem that um, Affirmative Action is trying to solve is, is making up for the last 150 years of the black 
uh, citizenry of the United States being descended from slaves, not having access to parental education, like your their great great grandfathers were, you know, slaves and didn't have didn't know how to read and write, and then they they have kids that if the parent doesn't know how to read and write, you know, education's passed down a lot of times from the adult to the child. So they're trying to solve this. I guess you would call it a class based issue because these people were treated as second class citizens when they were enslaved for in 1830. So it's trying to give these people now like push them into the the level, but. I think I agree with what I, you're saying I, that you just can't force people into higher education and expect mm -hmm. them to succeed. I they need to earn it. I disagree. I think you're giving too much benefit of the doubt to these people. Since the 50s, when we started seeing the rise of social programs, we've seen what appears to be something beneficial that causes harm. Like Seamus is pointing out, any person who scores low, who is put into a, an advanced program, will likely struggle with it mm -hmm. and it will cause them harm. I do not believe these people are ignorant of that fact when they have decades of data to show it. I think many of these people are intentionally trying to cause harm because they're overtly racist. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And we saw all throughout 2020 that the left one wants a race war. They want to inflame uh, division between uh, the races and the classes. And I think it's pretty sick. And I think that affirmative action is one of the most racist policies that we've ever seen. And DEI uh, and race-based hiring is also... Uh, in fact, racist. People should be hired and accepted based on merits and not based on ethnicity or color. Two examples I'll give you, Ian. One, there's a viral video of two white women vandalizing a black neighborhood. And two black women come up to them and say, stop destroying our neighborhood. And the Antifa liberal women go, no, no, we're doing this for you. <laughs> the, the, the far leftists would go into minority neighborhoods and assist in the destruction. I was there in Ferguson. And I'm asking myself, why are you people destroying the, this black neighborhood? They wrote, there was a leftist who wrote an article after Ferguson in defense of looting and made the argument that they were looting these buildings, the, that, that black people were looting buildings because it was resistance to the, to the machine that was oppressing them. The reality, the people who lived in the community linked arms to protect their businesses from outside looters. So why are these people in the media lying? over and over again about uh -huh. it. Perhaps it's because they're overt racists who know they're not going to be able to pull off these things if they come out and say, hey, their real plan is to hurt people. They need to act like they're doing good. Don't get me wrong. There probably are a lot of mm. dumb default liberals who think they're doing good. But I think the people organizing this know exactly what they're doing. Absolutely. Yeah. And, they're, you know, they're attacking uh, the Supreme Court justices as the racists. In reality, the people who support affirmative action are the racists. But... It's ridiculous to say that the Supreme Court justices are racist because they were appointed by the least racist president in American history. A report by Reuters just came out and it said that Donald J. Trump is the only living president who is not a direct descendant of slave owners. So Obama's a direct descendant of slave owners. Joe Biden's a direct descendant of slave owners. Uh, Jimmy Carter, the Bushes. Donald Trump appointed the Supreme Court justices who helped overturn Roe v. Wade. Therefore, they are the least racist Supreme Court justices in America, in my opinion, and possibly, you know, in Reuters' well, I, opinion as well. I, I tell this story. I met this uh, black dude who was anti-Trump, and we were having this discussion. This was in New York, and he said, Donald Trump is the least racist president this country has ever had. And I was like, oh, that's an interesting thing to say. Aren't you against Trump? And he's like, yeah, yeah, look, Trump's still racist. But you got to admit, he's the least racist president I've ever had. <laughs> and then I was like, well, elaborate. And he goes, yo, presidents own slaves. And I was like, fair point, fair point. <laughs> like, so his, his, his point was Trump is better than we've ever seen, but there's still work to be done. And I'm kind of like, okay, he was chill about it. You know, I can, I can respect that. Well, so, he shared and, the Reuters report the other mm -hmm. day. Trump did. That was hilarious. <laughs> I, no, I, I thought it was hilarious. I, I think it's like obviously a funny way to troll. One thing that I found very entertaining is the reaction from a lot of Democratic politicians with affirmative action being uh, overturned by the court. So Gavin Newsom says they want to whitewash our nation's history. They want to bring back to the they want to bring America back to the era of book bannings and segregated campuses. We cannot let them. AOC. Well, first, I'll read you uh, Elizabeth Warren. She said an extremist Supreme Court has once again reversed decades of settled law. And she goes on to bellow a bit more. And then my personal favorite, AOC, said, if SCOTUS was serious about their ludicrous colorblindness claims, they would have abolished legacy admissions, a.k.a. affirmative action for the privileged. 70% of Harvard's legacy applicants are white. SCOTUS didn't touch that, which would have impacted them and their patrons. I don't even know where to begin with that. AOC, the court was not 
deciding on legacy admissions at universities. Well, Viva the, Fry makes the good point with the top comment saying 71% of America is white, silly. Yeah. So, so it's actually an <laughs> underrepresentation at Harvard. That's also a very good point. But it's yeah. like, well, the Supreme, a, the Supreme Court didn't touch that. And then also it was something no one expected them to touch that wasn't on the table. And then it would have impacted them and their patrons as if the Supreme Court that is unelected people are making these decisions because uh, they're they're like bought and sold to make this decision. That's why that why um, they they decided to overturn affirmative action, but didn't say legacy applicants what are legacy allowed? applicants so these are people whose the children parents of went to the university yeah well, well it's important to remember that elizabeth warren lied about being native american to get hired at harvard which propelled her to you take that back that's, that's not true that's she is one one thousand twenty fourth <laughs> Native American, I believe. Well, of course, of course, she's that. defending so, affirmative action because you know she gamed the system to get I know. a job at Harvard and then become ultimately a U.S. senator. And but, so, but, but she, what was it? She was actually one one thousandth. Yeah, I lied. Something like I'm that. sorry. Yeah. Please don't sue me, Elizabeth. You are Native American. <laughs> one one thousand and twenty fourth. Well, no, no, no. Oh no. But here's what we can say. Here's what we can say. The Cherokee Nation told her she could not call herself Cherokee because what happened was she got this blood test back that. She Shown, showed that she was a very, very, very tiny fraction Native American. And she said, see, this means I'm Cherokee. That's like saying, well, my DNA test said that I have European blood in me. Therefore, I'm Italian. What are you talking about? That's like a much Italian more national. specific claim, right? But she's like, like she's talking but about she a was tribe. Like, yeah, but it, so she's pointing to a specific tribe and saying, I have indigenous American DNA. Therefore, I can claim membership in this tribe. That's not how it works. But it's more than that. It's like saying... I have European ancestry, therefore I'm a British citizen. Exactly, that's right. Yes, no, yes, no, you're yes. not. Yeah, I'm a British citizen. My DNA test uh, said that I'm one one thousandth British, so I guess I'm a citizen now. I can't. And the Cherokee she... Nation was like, "No, I got, no, no, thank you." I got. I just can't believe she tried to pull that off. But if she wants to, Trump sleep, shoulder is like, what happened. What's What's hilarious is that Elizabeth Warren is partially responsible for restarting a national conversation about why affirmative action is bad. Uh, you know, as President Trump started calling her Pocahontas, right? And everybody's like, why is she calling her Pocahontas? And well, she lied about her race and ethnicity to get into, uh, get a job at a school. And there was a CNN interview that I shared this morning. It was from 2017 where an admissions consultant uh, was debating why we need to ban affirmative action. And he predicted in 2017 that President Donald Trump will be the president to end it. He's going to uh, use the Justice Department to sue these schools, which he did. He sued Yale. Uh, and then he also said he's going to appoint three con constitutional conservative justices who will uh, overturn affirmative action. And so that guy on CNN was a, was a prophet. And so, uh, but thank you, Elizabeth Warren, because she also deserves some credit in overturning affirmative action due to being exposed as a liar. I, I look, at the, look at the New York Times wrote. They said, breaking the Supreme Court rejected affirmative, act affirmative action as Harvard at, at Harvard and UNC. The major ruling curtails race, race conscious college admissions in the U.S., all but ensuring that elite institutions become whiter and more Asian and less black and well, Latino. This is what I want to talk I, in, in a whatever, in a minor oh defense. Oh my goodness. Because what I'm going to say <laughs> might come off as a defense of affirmative action. I used to hate that. When I first learned about it in 1993, we were teenagers in high school and we would sit around and talk and be like, wait, if I apply for a job and I have a better score, they're going to hire a black guy that's not as good as me? And they're like, yeah. My friends are like, yeah, we're like, that's reverse racism, which turns out years later, we start to realize it's actually just racism. Why don't I get in? But OK, here's the situation. There's 100 of us. Us. We all live on a city block. Uh, us. And 100 years ago, super racist. The black people weren't allowed to go to school. They were kept as slaves. So their kids didn't have access to education. They had really crappy food, really small. Their brains didn't develop as much as they had poor nutrition. Now, 30, 40, 50 years later, their kids same thing. They didn't have a lot of access to food, nutrition. Now it's today, and they're like, we're going to hire the smartest people on the block. Well, it's the people that have ancestrally the best access to nutrition and education that are going to be considered the best. At And so naturally, the people with the most, the healthiest ancestors are going to get the crack at it. And what they're trying to do is to balance it out. So like, they're, sorry, they're your ancestors didn't have access to education. But but that's like the fairy tale version of what they're doing, which is not what they're doing. They're hitting it with the, a mallet. The, the it's not working. The, the way you solve this is class-based. So what's actually happening is you have impoverished, like we'll use Chicago as an example. You have impover impoverished areas with a higher density of, bl of black people. What the left does is they look at the neighborhood, see black people, and then think the race is the reason, which is racist. 
they then start saying insanely racist things. But there's also Latino, Eastern European immigrants, white people living in these areas as well. So here's what ends up happening. Because the people who can only see race who are racist and have always been racist think the solution to the problem is more racism. They go into a neighborhood that may be 70 percent black and 20 percent white, and they say all of the black people here are going to get a special benefit so that we can put them in better institutions. And then their their neighbors, their equals and their peers who are not black or who are you know Latino or white or whatever are, are sitting there holding empty bags saying, what about us? Then what happens when you have ver- people of different racial backgrounds and the, the state comes in and gives money literally to one racial group? In these areas, I'll tell you what happens. The racial group that doesn't get the benefit, they, they keep engaging in the crime they typically engage in, but they target the people with money. So you end up with other people being like, hey, this race is attacking this race. All it does is make racial tensions worse. The real solution is, as you're, as, in your analogy, 100 people living on a block, you know, 80 percent of or 80 of them are working at the best institutions and are wealthy. And they say, we want to we, we want to make sure everyone's got an equal opportunity. What do we do? I know those of a certain income bracket. Then they walk into the portion of their street where it's a higher density of black and Latino for historic reasons. And they say to everyone there, including the poor white people, the poor immigrants, the poor Latinos, the poor Asians, doesn't matter what your race is. We're here to help all of you. So would it be, I think it would still be a bad idea if Harvard were to let people in that were poor at a higher rate with the same test scores. Maybe not. No, it's about letting people in who are poor with the appropriate test scores, but waiving certain fees and giving them scholarships. The idea is, if you should be here, we're going to make sure you can be here. Just because you're poor doesn't mean you deserve to go to Harvard. But if we want to help break the cycle of poverty, we find the diamond in the rough in these areas and we say, you have real potential and the only thing holding you back is that your parents don't have the money. We're going to cover those costs for you. That's how you actually solve these problems. And if the left actually believed what they believed about historical racism and institutional racism, that policy right there would disproportionately help black and Latino individuals. You would not need affirmative action. So I can only conclude either they're stupid or they're lying. And the reality may be a mixture of both. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's right. I'll also add this. Part of what affirmative action does is it recenters our thinking about the purpose of having a career, the purpose about of going through an academic institution, the purpose of being admitted to a college. Right? The reason that society sanctions these things, the reason society gives a, a person the position of privilege and esteem that it is to be a student at one of these universities is because they believe that that student is going to be able to contribute. And the reason they have uh, good evidence to believe that that student's going to have something to contribute at the level that they're being given that honor is because of their test scores, because of their academic history, these things. The purpose of social positions is not to make the person in the social position feel special for having the social position. The purpose of a social position is to find what we can get from other people. What's a social position in this? Just movie? like, I mean, anything, uh, a job, a position as a student, right? With, with anything, a uh, Anything, anything that society carves out and says, this is what this person does. We're either going to hire you if we're an employer or we're going to elect you if you're someone running for office or we are going to give you this seat at our university if we're admitting you. The whole purpose of it is this is somebody who, if we give this position to, will be able to contribute to society society in a way such that it'll make it better. Not let's give this person this position so they can feel special. Here's the other thing. Imagine there was a neighborhood that was uh, lower income and these leftists are like, these poor people, they should go to college. Okay. For what? Go to college for what? Yeah. What, 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 what job or career or plan? So they go into this poor area and they say, we want to give you guys college. And the poor guy says, this area is working class, industrial factory. We are some of the best in these areas. The amount of money generated from these factories is lower than the Ivy League areas. That doesn't. Just because they may make less money doesn't mean everyone should just be in college. Some, some, like, what we want to do is we want to maximize people's talents and abilities. We want to make sure that everybody's getting th- their best opportunity. So if someone is from a neighborhood that typically is working class, but they clearly show an affinity for the law, we want to make sure that they have an opportunity mm-hmm. to reach that. The left just says, we want more people of race to be in institution, mm-hmm. which just makes no sense mm-hmm. so well, well, what, they're, what they're really saying is we want less white kids and less asian kids oh. at these institutions well the, it's the asian thing for the most part the uh you know i i've talked to leftists about this quite a bit 
and I'm and I always I always end by saying after they agree with all of this, all right, fine, have it your way, but you have to be the one to look the poor Asian kid in the eyes and say, I'm sorry, kid, you don't get to go to college because you look too much like that guy. Yeah. That's their argument. Well, I'm sorry, that little kid looks like that little kid. Therefore, only one of them gets to go to college. Well, I was talking, How does that make sense? I was talking to a friend of mine uh, who, he's a white guy who's married to a Mexican woman and they have a son together and uh, he was looking for private schools in uh, New York City. And he, his son's complexion looks more like his white father's than it does his Mexican mom's. And they said, actually, you know, you, you don't look the part. Like, we can't support you financially and give you some breaks because you don't look uh, the right color. And so even though he's half Hispanic, which would technically qualify him, but he doesn't, he doesn't look Hispanic, he doesn't get uh, a lower rate for tuition uh, as the Hispanic kids. And so, you know, it's just like... People are getting fed up with this. I think the affirmative action uh, being overturned is going to be incredibly popular with the American public. I think a lot of parents, a lot of white parents, a lot of Asian parents, uh, they've kind of held their tongue because they don't want to be called racist by uh, their woke liberal friends. Um, but these college campuses are turning into hell holes as well. I, I had a family member who graduated from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. So I went to the graduation in May. And some student on campus... Uh, just from random student got caught using the n-word. It was a white girl who used the n-word. So, ten minutes out of the graduation, two black girls got up on on stage, welcomed by the dean, and she lectured. These students lectured about how racist the University of Wisconsin Madison is, and how much progress they still need to make. And so. These girls are lecturing the entire graduating class and the 50,000 parents and family members that are in attendance about how racist the community is and how much the University of Wisconsin sucks. And they just let it happen. I'm like, what the hell is going on in these places? Yeah, well, there, there's a kind of self-flagellation that every left-wing institution has to partake in. We're so racist, we're so horrible, we're so sorry, that type of thing. I mean, they, they almost feel as if it's a kind of, and I shouldn't say they almost feel this way, it is. I mean, it's just a virtue signal, right? It's yeah, just a virtue signal. It was ridiculous. I mean, like, you spend all this money going to the school, and your kid's graduating, and the school forces you to listen to mm -hmm. how racist your, your, your kids are and how, yeah. how much the school sucks. So Your, your kids are horrible people. Thank you for the money. Uh, we'll send you a letter asking for donations. Take a look at this tweet from uh, Alina Johnson. So uh, let's see. She is the editor-in-chief at the Free Beacon. Harvard to turn to essays, it says in email. This is Harvard basically declaring they intend to ignore the Supreme Court ruling and use loopholes to keep being racist. Watch out, The Harvard. email says, Dear members of the Harvard community, Today the Supreme Court delivered its decision in Students for Fair Admissions versus President and Fellows of Harvard College. The court held that Harvard College's admission system does not comply with the principles of the Equal Protection Clause embodied in Title VI of the Civil Rights Act. The court also ruled that colleges and universities may consider in admissions decisions an applicant's discussion of how race affected his or her life, be it through discrimination, inspiration, or otherwise. We will certainly comply with the court's decision. You see what they're saying there? Yeah, absolutely. They're now going to just, make everybody write about their race, and then they're just going to choose people who they think fit their woke ideology. And it's going to be, I mean, this is going to be very difficult to enforce, right? Because I certainly, I don't advocate for lying in any situation, but a lot of people are just going to lie. A lot of people are going to write their essays about how, yep. like, they were black or they were Hispanic or whatever when they were white so that they could get into the institution. Some people have actually done that before. Some people have done that uh, by saying they're Native American. I'm not sure if you've heard of, well, heard of this. this yeah. A missions consultant who went on this CNN interview, he is Indian. And he said he was black so he could get into Harvard Medical School. Oh, wow. And then he went on and he's become one of the leading uh, advocates against overturning affirmative action. He said, this is wrong. Like, I should not have been able to get accepted just because I said I'm, you know, I'm black. And uh, now he's an admissions consultant and helps people. I don't know if he helps people game the system or, or whatever he does, but he went on CNN. And he said, we need to overturn affirmative action and has become one of the leading advocates in it. But well, I suppose the question is, how far will this go? Because affirmative action isn't just in universities. It's no. everywhere. It's we have the press secretary of the United States of America is simply hired because she's a black lesbian woman. So the vice president, well, that, that, that's, that's not over color, affirmative right? action. That's that's, it's, a, that's, it's, that's I think that's that, an opinion made by a lot of people who think it may be the case. 
I'm talking about specific and overt examples in in the public where they outright state it like like for for actual public jobs. Mm -hmm. They actually put in the descriptions. Hey, we hire based on these criteria. Well, Irish the vice, need not apply. Basically, the vice president, Joe Biden, said, I'm going to get a woman of color like that's. It's affirmative, affirmative action. action. Right. Well, and this is uh, this is an interesting point, right? Because we're told affirmative action is good. We're told the concept of diversity hires are good. But if you ever insinuate that someone was a diversity hire or that they're in their position because of affirmative action, that's evil. Why? No, if listen, affirmative listen. action's good, why is that a bad thing to say? Corrine, Corrine Jean-Pierre may be the worst press secretary mm -hmm. we've ever seen. Man. At least, in, I would say she is the worst in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. Jen Psaki job. was really good at what she did. Mm -hmm. She was really good. She, she, like as much you don't have to like her i i think she lied a whole lot mm -hmm. but she played the press that's what she did really Cre yes she was smarmy she's gonna s no, circle back on that bro exactly yeah, that's, that's the job. job yeah, yeah that's she, job. she nailed she it be very smart she nailed it i despise it uh I, i'm not even like even when it comes to spicer kaylee Mac kaylee mckinney did really really well because she had the book debunking the lives in the media mm -hmm. that is a fantastic way to handle it as for Corinne jean pierre she's the worst here's the thing she was hired by the, by the Biden administration for who knows what reason. Saying that she is, was hired for affirmative action is, an, is just an insult with no, as far as I know, there is no formal declaration that they were seeking out to hire a person based on these criteria. It's a weak argument. I have no idea about we her know, Kamala. We yeah. know they do it, but Kamala was an elected position. So even there, Joe Biden saying, I want diversity, doesn't meet the same level. No. What I'm talking about is... In our schools, in our yeah. fire departments, in our police departments, they explicitly say race as a criteria. Mm -hmm. That needs to end. If leftists want to be racist and then publicly declare they're racist, and then when it comes to hiring, we have to make that argument, we'll make the argument. But right now, affirmative action extends to a whole bunch of public institutions directly and overtly where the government literally allows you to take race into consideration for hiring for public jobs. That should not be allowed. And this should be the ruling to shut it down. I don't know if it will be, though, because this is specifically about university admissions. Yeah. No, I mean, 100%. I agree with all that. I think that there is a difference between a job posting saying we are going to hire people based on these racial characteristics and someone saying they're going to pick a VP based on those credentials. I just think both are really scummy and slimy and stupid. Well, I agree with you. The, the, it's, it's remarkable to me that there are I, don't, I, I just don't get it. Are, are people the average person is just stupid, and doesn't care. I, yeah. When you go to them and yes. you say, listen, the average listen. person is, thinks that if a, a square peg in a square hole means that it succeeded. Here's, what, here, 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 here's how polling works. I have a question for you, Seamus. Yes, hit me. Hit do me you, with uh, it. Actually, let me ask Ian. <laughs> Ian, do you think uh, universities should be allowed to reject an applicant based on their race? No. All right. That's uh, one vote in favor of opposing affirmative action. Uh, let me ask you another question, Ian. Do you think that universities should be allowed to uh, 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 allowed to approve applicants based on race if it helps bring diversity and give opportunity no. to underprivileged no. uh, groups. Bring the best people, man. I do not care what you look like or who your dad was. This is how the pollsters do it. You go to someone and say, should, should Harvard be allowed to let minorities into the school to help end equal, uh, in inequality? Mm -hmm. Everybody says yes. An different pollster goes out and says, do you think Harvard should be allowed to reject a candidate based on their race? Everyone says no. You see how that yeah, works? Because yeah. if you're allowing someone to come in based on their race, that means you are rejecting everyone else based on their race. Quite literally. That means that for, in order for that to exist, two applicants come in, a Asian one and a black one, and you say too many Asians, not enough black people. That's how it works. One would be rejected. So this is how pollsters operate. And this is how the public operates. The left uses this this language manipulation, gender affirming care. Like, where did that come from? I don't you know, know. What I mean? this is what the yep. affirmative action. Call it racist, yep. race based admissions, race based hiring. Do you believe race? Uh, do you believe we should have uh, race as a criteria in, in job applications? No. Yes or no? No, no, not and unless it's like an aside part. from casting for a movie. Look, if you're yeah. going to do a Netflix reboot, right? But it's I mean, true. I, I, you know, nope. the way you look and not even that in acting nope. it is. Yeah, Anne Boleyn has to be played by. Uh, <laughs> is, that, is that what happened or whatever? Like, I don't know. Anne Boleyn was a black girl. They did a movie, a reboot. Yeah. And, they ha and, the, and they're doing they're doing uh, another movie with like a mixed race woman. I'm all about that. But you shouldn't have to. Well, didn't okay. well, some like Academy Awards or something say you have to have like a diverse or minority group represented as like one of the top characters in the movie or you're not going to be uh, 
eligible for one of our awards. I got it. Well, that's how you know if a movie's Shameless. good or not, though. Do you want to? Do you want to uh, take the lead role in my movie about Shaka Zulu? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Would As, you? He'd it, be the British dude that fought Shaka. What? What? What's that about? I I, I just Shaka signed Zulu, onto it. Dude, just, African warlord. He that was, would be a good was, movie, by the way. You, is he, crazy is he general the warlord? That? Yeah. Well, hold on. We can cast anyone in any role. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you'll be I'm Shaka an actor. Zulu. You can is be this Shaka animator Zulu or live baby. action? Live action. Okay. Live action. Seamus Coughlin as Shaka Zulu. <laughs> you'll you, play the, the young Shaka though, like the five year old. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm too old for that role. No, never. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Anybody can play anything. Oh my goodness. I see it. He was merciless, dude. In a good way. I mean merciless brutal dude. oh my goodness merciless good this way. is the zulu i mean as a warlord leader like genghis khan style this guy was one of them is it a surfboard he's holding that's no, a shield, shield. those dudes shield were wild run. man the yeah, jaguar they had, this, they had no, that, the jaguar what was that what was that weapon that was like a curved stick with a ball at the end of it mm -hmm. uh, the crazy called, uh, stuff dude uh, uh anyway he was like it makes. a powerful name. warlord but my mm -hmm. point is simply they will they will like their ideology makes no sense if we're doing a period piece from, you know, 1500s Europe, mm -hmm. they'll say, oh, who cares if it's if it's a, you know, a black or Indian person playing yeah. the white characters. But you're not going to cast a Seamus Coughlin as Shaka yeah, Zulu. Yeah, because that would just, that, that would, like, that would be racist and stupid, right? That would just be racist and stupid. But when you do the exact opposite of it, it becomes non-racist and smart. <laughs> like, all right. Okay, I guess so. <sighs> I thought we were like bypassing the race thing in 20, 2006. I was like, man, we really have started to see eye to eye, brain to brain. Like I was actually getting to a point where I would just look at people, I'd see their eyes and everything else was just kind of this gray, black, white, green, blue mesh of, of color and shade. And I'm just like interfacing with their brain. Something happened in, in I guess Obama pushed a little bit too much racism uh, subtly. When he was in office, like the black kids, the black kids, and you're like, dude, it's just, it's not. Seamus is gonna wake up from the simulation. He's gonna be a black woman. <laughs> why was? Why is? Why are you picking on me? Picking on <laughs> why you? Why is it always me? How's that picking? What's wrong yeah, with black women? No, not yeah. that he's because my, Tim, my Tim point is, is insinuating. No, you know, Ian bringing up like the AI stuff. You know, if we if we do go metaverse AI and all that stuff, people are going to identify as whatever they want. Like Rachel Dolezal. If she was in the metaverse, she, her, 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 you would, you would meet she her. She identifies and, anything, yeah. Yeah, well, as a black woman, and she's a white woman. Well, so you'll, you will have like white men, morbidly obese white men who identify as, as black, thin black women will do that. And you'll have like, you, you know, you'll, you'll have an Asian guy who identifies as a Mexican dude and stuff like that. Like people will just decide to, to present these ways in, in the AI, in the metaverse. Well, you know, it's interesting because we'll joke about people like Rachel Dolezal, right? Uh, and we'll talk about how ridiculous that is. But, I mean, really, race is actually on much more of a spectrum than sex is. Yeah. Right? You can well, actually be is. half one and half the other. Like, if, you, right. have a, if you have a, a black mother and a white father, then you're going to be half black and half white. So those boundaries are actually not as well pronounced as the boundaries between the sexes are. And yet, we'll say because of, like, some infinitesimal number of people who have... Uh, confusing anatomy oh, or birth oh, defects oh. that that means that that sex is on a spectrum it's ridiculous yeah like like rachel if rachel dolezal is one percent black mm -hmm. then is she allowed to identify that this is the interesting question no that the uh no no um uh it was college humor i think who did this uh -huh. the, the yes the yes yes the panel of asians if you can identify as asian yeah so it's uh it's a it's a full it's a full asian a half asian and a quarter asian on a on a judging panel and a guy walks in who's an eighth asian and they're trying to determine what he's allowed to do. It's like, is he allowed to compliment Asian food? And it's like, yes, but not if there's anyone there who's more Asian than you. <laughs> That's right. Then you have to ask first. And then at the very end, the last gag is a guy walk in and he's like, my great great grandma was black. And they're like, you're black. <laughs> very different. This is the melting pot, the United States. It's got to be intentional. This push for racism has got to be intentional. It, it wasn't supposed to be this way, man. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like this in the early 2000s at all. There was the Arab racism. That's probably what really started. It was 9-11. Fear the Arab kind of mentality that they got forced on us. 2003 was crazy hyper racism dude people were banning muslims and crap 100 years of democrat rule in chicago and it is extremely racially segregated yep. they have done nothing to stop it they keep saying they're doing things to help people all they're doing is making it worse yep and and new york isn't isn't as bad as chicago but very very similar in terms of racial segregation and how the police handle all this stuff i mean during the 2020 summer of love college campuses started having 
uh, they said if you come back to school in, sept- in, in the fall, we will have black only dorms. In 2020, they have segregated dorms, but uh, because they're showing how non-racist they are, like it's it's insane. We've done a total. We, we've gone completely backwards, and so it's yeah. Uh, let's 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 jump to the story because we were getting a little bit into AI, and I do have this story um, pulled up from the GMG Union. This is the I believe it's the Gizmodo Media Group. This is big news. Check it out. And the Onion Union. Wow. Our statement on GO Media's plan to implement AI content just days after laying off newsroom members. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not a big fan of uh, Jezebel, Jalopnik, Kotaku, Deadspin, etc. I thought you loved them. Gizmodo. But uh, I stand with them on this. Now, personally, I think it's fantastic if these people ultimately lose their jobs. Because I am uh, uh, um, remorseless and ruthless in... <laughs> The, the left-wing lies perpetrated by these individuals are horrifying. The reality is AI Jezebel is 50 million times worse than some random feminist complaining on the internet. They write, on June 29th, Geo Media informed editorial staff that it'll begin a modest test of AI content on its websites. The AV Club, Deadspin, Gizmodo, Jalopnik, Jezebel, Kotaku, Quartz, The Root, and The Takeout. As the unionized editorial staffers of Geo Media Organized the Writers Guild of America East, we are appalled by this news. The hard work of journalists cannot be replaced by unreliable AI programs, notorious for creating falsehoods and plagiarizing the work of real writers. <laughs> Can we just take a yeah, moment? Yeah, no, journalists uh, don't yeah. do any of that. Dude, they've literally well found perfect for replicas. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, and, and for, for lower cost. Our newsrooms have spent decades building trust with audiences. Sure. Introducing computer-generated garbage undermines our ability to do our jobs, erodes trust in us as journalists, damages our brands, and threatens our jobs. Okay, they're firing you, though. They don't care about your jobs. They don't care about you. Now, here's what I got to say. Man, that's a tough one to read. These people have no trust. They don't. They, these, these, or, these, these news websites have been sold end over end because nobody reads them. They, they produce an article to get viral clicks. Someone will read it and then leave and not come back. They have no core base. That's why they're struggling and failing. Timcast, for instance, is doing better than ever because we actually have an audience and we care about our audience. We built up trust with our audience by trying to be trustworthy. They don't. But I got to say it. If these websites implement AI, it will be worse than you could imagine because the AI will be unchecked. And it will be just pulling a bunch of random garbage on the internet, compiling it into a paragraph that's not real, yeah. and people will believe it. And where it gets worse, it's not about one website doing it. It's the fact that all of these websites, the AI they get, will be reading the AI articles they write. Gizmodo will AI generate an article that Jezebel's AI will read. It will then compile that AI article into a new article, which Gizmodo will then read. And then make an article which Jezebel will read. You get my point. If the AI models are only learning from other AI news websites, the end result is going to be a whole bunch of fake news worse than you've ever seen. Now, I can also say this. There is a positive possibility. If they do this, they are essentially destroying themselves. These people are getting fired. They're losing their jobs. It's the end of these organizations. And the AI garbage content will only work for a couple of years at best. So maybe we say, if they want to set a fire that destroys them, why should we intervene? My view is that fire will spread everywhere on the internet. And eventually you'll see some conservative be like, here's an article from conservative news dot, you know, news or whatever that says Donald Trump does backflip. And the source is... You know, conservativetrends.com, whose source is Fox News, and Fox saw it on Gizmodo, and Gizmodo wrote the whole thing up fake from an AI. It will be too confusing if we allow this to happen. My fear, it's going to happen anyway. So at the very least, I can express I oppose it, but I think it's coming anyway. I'd like to have some of these reporters, journalists, whatever you want to call them, on the show, these people that are being fired. It's as you were talking, Tim, I started to think of Jesus talking about bring me your huddled masses. You're tired, you're poor, however he said it, but bring them, bring them. They're, they're allowed. Talking, here. I think you're talking about the Statue of Liberty. And the, yeah, Jesus, the, that was, Jesus. Didn't, didn't Jesus say, like, Liberty bring me the weak Jesus. among you, the, the sick, the poor? Is no, that, that's in the Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty. OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not a Christian. But what didn't oh, Jesus good. also acknowledge? Well, like, he cared for the poor and loved the poor. That's and, what I'm talking yeah, about, man. Yeah, so yeah. these people are. They're, they're about to be cast he, he, aside into the dregs of society. They're being fired from an already, in my opinion, crappy institution. 
I think it's now it's time to 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 accept like to be there for them. You want to hire them? them, tell their stories. No, I want to have them on and and hear them complain about what happened to them. I'll hire them. <clears throat> Absolutely. Maybe. Ooh boy, yeah. Uh, it's the uh, it's a, it's called the Goku method. Well, the thing is, I wonder. Goku, uh, uh, see, listen. What you got to understand is a very important life lesson. When Vegeta tried to destroy the Earth, okay, and was fighting with Kakarot, Goku and the the Z team converted Vegeta into one of their allies, and now he's actually one of the most popular characters. It's a very Abraham Lincoln method. Well, yeah. th this that's, is... what, that's how you got to do it. So we got to hire them and turn them into good good guys. Do you think there's anyone behind the scenes at these places who have become disillusioned and actually would like to work here? I'm willing I to bet. I think there's a possibility that at least I, it's, uh, there's got to be at least one person at one of these places. I, I am half kidding, but I am willing to bet a good portion of the people who work there are only saying what they think they have to say to get by in a city. Yeah. And if someone came along and said, how would you like to own your own house, have an acre of land to yourself and not have to worry about this anymore? I'm willing to bet a bunch of them say, sure. Oh, yeah. And it's here, like, okay, you can move out to Western Maryland and West Virginia where you can buy a house for substantially cheaper than a condo in New York City. You'll have land, you'll have a car, you'll have clean, fresh air, and no one will, will come down on you for saying the wrong thing. That's the real revolution, is the people that are waking up realizing that careers and livelihoods will be stripped by artificial intelligence and a technocracy going to take their power back, like creating their own jobs and their own communities. That's how it's going to work. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm ha look, and I said this before um, when we were talking about another media outlet we won't name going under, and I understand this, no one here has technically gone under, but there's a potential for it. I hope that these people find more productive work than writing lies for a living. Well, I at least hope they have a great awakening. I mean, I'm sure a lot of these news networks, they celebrate if a coal mine shuts down or a factory gets moved overseas to, to China or to Mexico or, or wherever it may be. Uh, and, you know, I'm not excited about the the with AI rising. I don't I personally don't want AI to replace truck drivers because driving truck is a top profession for men who don't graduate high school or just have a GED. Um, uh, you know, and so like, I don't necessarily want journalists to lose their jobs, uh, but a lot of these journalists have cheered on, have cheered <laughs> hey, on other industries like <laughs> coal miners because of the, you know, the environmentalists, uh, in the, in the, in the journalist newsrooms, they hate coal, they hate oil. And so they cheer every time like a pipeline gets shut down or something like that. And tens of thousands of people are put out of work, but uh, hopefully they use this as an opportunity to be like, you know what, maybe I'll stop writing uh, cheerful articles about these real working class Americans losing their jobs. I don't think they will you know ever I mean? stop hating real working class Americans, but, to be honest. But, but here, but, yeah, I wish it happened. But it doesn't matter. Let me tell you a story, right? It was uh, Brian Krasenstein recently put out a tweet about uh, libs of TikTok and a, a, a feud ensued. And uh, he shouted us out saying... He wrote, Tim Poole wrote, wrote the most fair uh, and correct assessment of what happened with the story. It was actually Chris Bertman, our writer, who wrote the story up. And our intention with TimCast News is literally just to tell you what happened. I don't care if you agree or disagree with Brian Krasenstein. We've had him on the show, disagree with him on a lot of things, agree with him on some things. I think we had a good conversation. You know, he's a liberal guy. Chris Bertman wrote the story as it was. Krasenstein tweets, he's like, I can't believe it. He's like, it's, it's Tim Poole who's, who's writing the honest... Listen, maybe that will, you know, a little light bulb on for the Krasensteins. If you are reading TimCast News, you are getting our best attempt at just telling you what's happening. We are not trying to trick you or manipulate you or help anybody win an election. That's how you get it done. The problem is these people at these companies like Gizmodo, Jezebel, whatever, they're, they're lying for clicks. Why? Well, their bosses tell them to. Not so much overtly. They say, hey, you're not pulling your weight. Your articles aren't doing very well. So what does the writer do? Chases the algorithm to try and figure out what gets the most clicks. Timcast News does not exist to generate revenue. It exists because we want there to be some good, uh, effective journalism out there. Be it Elad Eliyahu on the ground in New York capturing that viral video that took over the internet for the past week, the we're coming for your children thing, or an article by Chris Bertman explaining just what the feud was to the point where Brian Cranston is like, wow, thank you for being honest about what happened. It's not like it's a positive story about him. It's just we're not lying about him. Yeah. We're not going to make money off that. And we don't need to. We just want there to be a source for news that does, does a good job. 
news, I don't think can be a big money maker. I think it's got to like, so that, that's basically what we do. I'll, I'll stress this. When you become a member at TimCast.com, understand that your membership helps support the news, the writing that we do at TimCast.com, the news reports we do, and journalists like Elad Eliyahu on the ground at these, at these marches just filming what they're saying. Elad didn't put out a video and say, I can't believe they would say this. These people are discussing. He literally just tweeted, marchers say X. Mm -hmm. Fact statement. And then everybody was shocked by it. It created this big hubbub. That's the point of doing good news. And of, of, of doing, not good news, but doing journalism right. We, these, these people are just in it, for, they're, they're in it for the clicks and the revenue. Mm -hmm. You can't run a business that way. Yeah, I, I'm also, you know, I'm curious to see how these AI algorithms, when they start writing articles, are going to try to test the algorithm to figure out what goes viral. That's going to be very interesting to yep. see. And also to see how quickly AI is going to be able to crack that code and figure algorithms like this out. It's going to be, the, the, that's why I've described the AI apocalypse as people walking around dressed like cop, corn, corn of the cob, turning on a TV and there's nothing but corn commercials. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you're going on the internet and like everyone's phone is shaped like a piece of corn. And all anyone talks about is the new corn that just came out. And the reason being, the AI will latch onto something it thinks is popular, force it, and then create a cycle. Like, it will create a self-fulfilling prophecy of it, popularity. It'll know, like, if this article goes up at 3.17 3, p.m., it's more likely to get views. If we posted an article about corn yesterday at 1.17, and so it'll start pre-confluencing -con these, these behaviors to try and manipulate humans to be at the right moment at the right time to see the stuff. But I do agree that it's not for-profit news is kind of funky anyway. It was never really supposed to be about making money. I don't, well, maybe it was, I guess, when they started newspapers, they were all for-profit. All those Extra, guys, extra. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it was a service early on. Uh, there's an old newspaper we, uh, I was reading at an antique shop, or I can't remember where, where I got it from. Um, it's like a bulletin. And the news is something literally like, you know, Bill replaced his front door. Mm -hmm. It was like the news was literally just like what the neighborhood was up to. Yeah. And as the world got bigger, the news got, got bigger. Dude, I bet Bill wasn't happy. You know, when, when newspapers were just about what was going on around the town, people were like, I don't think everyone needs to be in my business. They don't need to know about that new door. It, right? would, it would be like... The IRS is going to start wondering how I got the money for a new door. It's just shut it down. Literally, the news would be like on the front page, it would say, John's Shoes selling a new nine, size 9 model. You know, we talked to him about it. And it's like seemingly innocuous... But this is what mattered. And you like, you read it, like, oh, I'll go check that out. I'll go downtown and you'll see what's up. In a way, it was a simpler time, but those were also the times when you'd get a letter in the mail saying, come, you're going to fight a war that you have no idea what's going on about <laughs> and you'll likely survive and then you wouldn't. And we ain't going back till it's over yeah. over there. Now we know what's going on in the world. We can say no a year, 10 years beforehand and change the course of war as mm. a populace. So that's... I wonder though. Better. So I, I think it's good to be informed. I think it's good to know about these things, but then... You wonder, especially at a broad level, when people aren't focused on local issues and are looking more at national politics, how much a person can really affect. Like, I think knowing more about what's actually going on in your own neighborhood, with your own school board, and in your own local elections would probably be way more productive in the long run. Yeah, like uh, building a balloon and floating a balloon, both are important. Like the building of the balloon is the local structure, mm. structural organization. But once you've got that down... You got to learn how to float the balloon, which mm -hmm. is geopolitics. Yeah, I, I just don't think we have the inflating of the balloon down. I was going to say, I don't think we have the inflation down, but well, we have the inflation down. Um, I, I just think we, we haven't reached that point where our, our local politics are um, as together as they should be. Yes, yeah, so not enough people know how to build their own structural balloon. And so mm -hmm. they're screaming and trying to grab the one that's already there and control right. it. But like, you've got you've to build your own. You know, mm -hmm. Here's what I think. For no reason. I think everybody should move to Berkeley County, West Virginia. Why? Why? How come? Just because. Just because. Move to Berkeley County, West Virginia. This is not financial advice. If you're, uh, if you're planning, uh, uh, we, we, we welcome y'all as neighbors. Yeehaw. I love I'll, it. I'll, I'll just say that um, Jefferson County is the Harpers Ferry area, and then just to the west is Berkeley County. Jefferson County is based, and Berkeley County is cringe. I kind of want and to we to need uh, we need some good neighbors to come and help uh, make West Virginia great again. Mm. So as we are seeking to, you know, obviously we're building our studio. The reason I bring this up is because we're talking, you know, in terms of local politics, people really don't pay attention. And so as uh, I'll give a shout out to A.G. Morrissey, 
Because last night we were saying like, where's the action being taken? Mm -hmm. And he he's he's not the guy for this in West Virginia. Some states and at the federal level, the AG is in, in charge in charge of a lot of this. Uh, the AG in West Virginia isn't as much, so it's not necessarily on him. It's on the DA. But my understanding is that Berkeley County is su surprisingly fairly woke. Hmm. And so what all that really means is the people of West Virginia, especially Berkeley County, who we know for a fact are not on average lefties, have not done their civic duty and gone and voted and paid attention to what was going on at the local level. And they have allowed, for instance, uh, uh, child drag, drag shows for children to happen in their jurisdiction. Jefferson County banned it. Berkeley County uh, is allowing it to take place. Yeah. And I really doubt the uh, the DA will actually do anything. But, you know, well, I gotta say, we'll see. Morris, I think if more people move out there. And Morrissey's running for governor. I think he's going to have tremendous success in the upcoming primary. Uh, he's, I think he's a phenomenal AG. He's been a leader on the uh, fighting the woke issues. You know, the state of West Virginia divested uh, from BlackRock before any other state. So, you know, everybody focuses on how Ron DeSantis in Florida divested, but uh, you know, Riley, Riley, I believe, yeah, Riley Moore, the state treasurer and Morrissey, uh, they were the first state to divest. And so um, I think he's going to be a, a great governor as well if he gets the opportunity. Riley Moore is awesome, man. He's been on the show a couple yeah. of times. He was just here a few weeks ago. I, and I got to say about Harper's Ferry, West Virginia, one of the most beautiful cities I've ever seen in my life. Seriously. It's like a small San Francisco, probably what it was like in the 1860s. Bef right right around the gold rush time uh it's like just buildings that have been leveled to the ground i would love to live in harper's ferry i've kind of got my eyes and my focus on harper's ferry right now and if it's yeah. coming out woke whatever i don't care i will transform that city i will be there for those people i want to be part of the local community and the local governance wow what a place to live with the divergence of those two rivers it's beautiful it really is very beautiful and the real estate prices out here are incredible um i know the governor the current governor and some state legislators they wanted to make west virginia zero income tax and uh if they end up doing that i mean i i would move here in a heartbeat yeah property uh property values will definitely jump if they do that but it's sad. You see this happening in places like Harper's Ferry, where it's like this beautiful little town. Not in Harper's Ferry. It's illegal in Harper's Ferry. What are you talking about? Jefferson County is where Harper's Ferry is. They yeah, have yeah. specifically outlawed drag shows. Oh no, that's that's not just that's kids. not just what I'm talking about. But you, you, Ian, you mentioned it being woke. But you'll have these. Oh, maybe it's not. Maybe I have no, no, that no. wrong. Cool. But the, you'll you'll have these. But you know, you'll go there and see pride flags and stuff. I mean, you have these like beautiful little pockets of the country <coughs> that a lot of left wing people move from big cities to, and then start to fill up and hang their flags everywhere. And but they're allowed to, to do that. I love if, it. If you, yeah, if I, I don't. I mean, you're allowed to purchase a place where you want to. It's just ironic because they're the people who complain about gentrification and people being displaced. Well, but then they're hypocrites. fine filling. Exactly, they're fine filling all, up all these I'm conservative little is, areas and pushing the original culture out. I, w I will say this too because I looked it up, and uh, according to WestVirginia.gov, it does say that the attorney general is responsible for state criminal law. Mm -hmm. So, uh, playing a critical role with regard to state criminal law, prosecuting on behalf of the state. So, but apparently. The argument I'm hearing is that this is going to come down to the county DA as regards to having this lewd and lascivious behavior in public involving children. So my view is just that, uh, you know, I, I bring this up. One, obviously it's personal to us because we're we're investing in the area and building in the area. But uh, if people don't pay attention to their local politics, don't be surprised when MAGA country, West Virginia, elects liberal district attorneys who who allow criminal activity you know what i noticed obama used to do is jog jog around the city hmm. i don't know if he did it a, a lot when he was president yeah, whatever Bogoyevich did too yeah and i did used to do that oh, in la and it, you yeah. want to talk about getting in touch with your community jog around the streets jog around the blocks just jog by people's houses sometimes you see them and you wave at them while you're jogging it's awesome yeah, yeah awesome. i'm, I, I'm I more never... concerned about are you paying attention to who's running yeah what not they just believe who's in. jogging not yeah. just who's jogging <laughs> and uh uh if you are not voting your local elections, don't be surprised if one day you wake up and there are, you know, adults walking around thrusting their their naked bodies at children. And then when you call the police, the police say, DA says it's fine. Well, I'd like to give a shout out to 1776 Project PAC. They've been uh, raising more money than any other group to help elect uh, good conservative school board candidates across the country and they've winning at incredible rates uh and then also president trump just introduced uh, a new policy that he'd like to implement where you allow parents to vote on who's the principal of your local school wow, oh neat. that's great and so like 
you know, what happens now is like a woke superintendent in a big, you know, city or something like that. They are the people that are, are trying to identify who the next principal is. But like, I think the parents should have a say in who is in charge of the each each school across the country. Well, let's uh, let's uh, let's do this. Let's jump to this next story. We got this from uh, Daily Mail. Take a look at this. Google drops its sponsorship of Pride and Drag Show after hundreds of workers signed a petition calling it a direct affront to the religious beliefs and sensitivities wow. of Christians. What is this? Wow. Seamus? Look at I, that. Thought, I, thought you guys, I thought you guys were being oppressed. You thought It's wrong, a war on right. Christian. <laughs> Listen, we're pushing back. We're saying we're done. We're finished. No, I mean, obviously, this isn't Christians are one of the, the groups that you're allowed to hate on in America. And as it turns out, they're getting kind of sick of it. And they're starting to actually stand up for their values. It's a beautiful thing to see. And I'm very proud of all of these people for standing up and saying something. Because one thing we've said on this show countless times is that if you're in one of these positions, if you're at one of these companies, and you're too afraid to speak up, the problem is only going to get worse. So thank you to everyone who signed this and, open letter. And, but I also think... We're finally starting to see conservatives take the advi advice that, that, for one, I've been saying for a long time, and that's use their own laws against them. Mm -hmm. It is illegal to discriminate on the basis of gender, sex, race, religion, national origin, etc. So when they announce they're doing this, this is what I was saying about that kid, the kid in Boston or whatever who wore the shirt that said there are two genders. And they're like, you got to take off the shirt. It's, it, it offends people. They should have immediately said, okay. We are counter suing for the school to remove anything referencing pride because it offends Christians. Yeah. And now we're seeing it. These Google employees were like, hey, you're discriminating against us based on religion. That's illegal. And they, what did Google do? I don't think Google cares about Christians. I think they're worried about lawsuits. Yeah. They'll lose them. Dude, and it'll be like Easter and then their little Google graphic will be some insanely obscure Marxist theorist birthday or something. Yeah. I mean, they, they don't care about Christians at all. Yeah. Oh, I, I agree with you on that. But I think a lot of these companies are starting to wake up. I, the Bud Light boycott was incredibly successful, the outrage on Target. Uh, and another exciting thing is that uh, conservatives are not just able, you know, we're not just boycotting these companies now. They're taking their dollars and shopping with their values. And you're seeing marketplaces. You had Michael Seifert on last night from Public Square. The dude's crushing it. He's got like a million daily uh, or monthly active users, tens of thousands of businesses from all across the country uh, on his app, Public Square. And, uh, you know, Americans are like, I don't want to give my dollars to these companies that hate my guts, I want to shop with my values. I'm going to support a local business in my community that says they, you know, respect me and respect my values. And so, uh, it's a good step in the right direction, but like, I agree with what Seamus is saying. You, you go on to Google on Easter and there's nothing, but if you go on to Google on Juneteenth, it's the biggest celebration in the history of the world. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Or, or it can be like a Christian holiday and they'll find a way to honor something else instead. It's just it's ridiculous. What, I want to know more about this story. Uh, what did Google actually pull support from? They were going to have a drag show. They say Google dropped its sponsorship of a San Francisco Pride event. The tech giant sponsors a series of LGBT events across the US annually. And this year, the headline event was due to be a Pride and Drag show at Bo Gay Bar featuring popular performer Peaches Christ. But employees wow. noticed Google removed the show from its internal events page after a petition was launched opposing the event on religious grounds. Well, it sounds like they did it because the guy, the performer, named himself Christ. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're like directly and clearly mocking Christianity. So if it, you, if if you live in straight... L.A., file a federal lawsuit mm -hmm. over the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence performing at uh, Dodgers. Yep. And it's like, if you want to do a drag show, fine. You probably shouldn't have kids there and it shouldn't be done in, in, a, in the stadium. But you want to bring on people to explicitly mock someone, a group of people? Sorry, those are your laws. You can't do that. Sue. Mm -hmm. So I, Start suing. I, I suppose a drag show doesn't necessarily upset Christianity, but it's calling yourself Christ that upset Christianity. Well, well drag shows upset Christians too, but I think in order to put together an open letter that says there's religious discrimination specifically it obviously helps that it's an open mockery of Christianity. Yeah, drag shows probably bother Christians for a lot of reasons, but mm -hmm. not as Christians. Mm -hmm. And they don't necessarily... Or, well, even even as Christians, right? Like the Deuteronomy says a man's not supposed to wear a woman's clothing or a but, woman man's clothing. Right, right, I understand that. But my point is, if a guy puts on a, a dress and crazy makeup and dances on stage, he's not intentionally trying to attack Christians. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. I mean, the, the fact that they this guy was specifically singling Christianity out 
gives them the grounds to say it's religious discrimination if the com if the company we work at funds this or sponsors mm -hmm. this. I was thinking about Shakespeare a lot lately because they used to wear drag. Mm -hmm. The women weren't allowed to perform, mm -hmm. weren't allowed to be actors back then. So they would all, it would all be all the women would be played by men in drag. But it was widely accepted. I don't know how how grotesque they would get on stage. This I don't is think there's a lot of simulated sex in Shakespeare. It's a bit different. This is culture war winning. This is Google of all organizations backing off of a pride event. And it's not the first time we've seen something like this. Seamus actually put out a cartoon uh, today <laughs> that yeah. it's been a very bad pride month. Exactly. They and haven't it's been like, getting what they've wanted. The, Star the, Starbucks pulled back. Right. Yeah. And then the, the, in Seamus' cartoon, the woman looks at her phone and all the, all the logos are changing back to normal. <laughs> but yeah, after like a day or two, these companies are, are pulling away from this because regular people are saying... Not interested. Enough. I didn't see all the companies change their logos from their normal logo to their Pride logo this this year. Are you changing your picture for MAGA Month? I will be. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everyone on. on July first, everyone's profile fo pictures have to be changed to an American flag version. But Sally, oh. use your blue check for a little while on Twitter. If you change your picture. Yep. What? So, yeah. Be careful. I've heard that too. Or your name. No. Add, like a, add the American what? flag to your bio. You. Yeah. If you, you change lose your no, verification. No, 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 no. Change your profile picture to be the same one, but with a background of an American flag. You still lose. If yes. you change your profile what? picture, you yeah, lose verification. Right, right. It takes about three days really? to get it re-verified. It took me about three days to yeah, get it Yeah, you still get it back, but... But I well, tell you what, 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 what you, stop me. What do you love more, that check mark or your flag? That's what I'm Come talking about. I, have oh, the, I got no issue. I, got I have no the issue. flag in my bio. Who <laughs> needs a check mark when you got <laughs> America? Yeah, but we're, 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 we're corporate verified, so I think we don't... That wouldn't matter for us. They might fast track you. Because we're, 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 we're an approved organization... With Twitter. You know what? I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah. It, I believe you're right, though, Alex, that it is the policy that if you change your name on Twitter or your profile picture, there's a day or there's a there's a set amount of time where they've got to re-verify you. And then they don't well, the, charge you money or anything. The, they just need to the, make the sure. The way it works for organizations, we just give someone verification and you're verified instantly. Well, did you see Congressman Wesley Hunt? And you guys had him on the program. He's introducing yeah, he's a resolution uh, in Congress to make July American Pride Month. MAGA month. And so, well, MAGA month, American Pride month, maybe got the idea from your show. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it's going to be a congressional resolution. And so if anybody disrespects the law, well, you got to hold them accountable. June is American Greatness Month. Hmm. And so what was happening was all of these organizations were changing their corporate logos to rainbows to symbolize uh, God's covenant to the earth. So it was actually, you know, they're, they're, they're all Christians. It's just a long game. <laughs> it's a long game. <laughs> No, but, you know, I was saying this uh, for a while. I think, Seamus, I think you should fly a rainbow flag. And I think Christians should march at their protests with rainbow flags. We just have to Not make the it, same make one. It you need to make it abundantly clear this is ours. You took it from us. You make. I, I would recommend that you take the actual rainbow, the full colors mm -hmm. uh, in God's covenant, and fly that flag. So it is somewhat discernibly different, but kind of similar. The point being, do you really think the left, based on how they operate tribally, is going to defend their use of it? They're gonna they're gonna run screaming. Oh, the left's it. the left's gonna claim that Christians appropriated the rainbow from the LGBTQ community. They'll stop flying the rainbow flag. Huh. They'll change. Do you it. think so? Absolutely. Huh. You'll be like, we're totally. You, you, you'll respond to them. Hey, that's really cool that you have a rainbow. That's our symbol, and it's been for thousands of years too. Stole we're, it. We're, I, but don't yeah, even say that. Just yeah. be like, we're gonna fly this. We're gonna fly a rainbow flag too. Mm -hmm. Then when they go and march. All you got to do is when you see a guy with a pride flag, be like, hey, Christians. Like, no, 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 we're not. They're like, well, <laughs> Look they're at not. The, it's Christo fascists. They're trying to take the country over and force their values on like, us. Like, if, if you're not Christians, why are you flying God's covenant flag? Mm -hmm. they'll be like, it's not, it's the pride flag. And it'll be like, that's the, one of the deadly sins. That doesn't, that yeah, doesn't line up with his covenant. The rainbow's the symbol of God's covenant. It's, yeah. a, it's a Christian symbol and has been forever. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh, it's interesting. Are there seven colors of the rainbow? Is that right? Yeah, I think uh, seven Roy virtues in Catholicism. R -O -Y uh, yeah, you know, seven uh, virtues. Seven virtues. Seven colors. They're talking of the like, rainbow. oh, this is the seven deadly sins. Oh, it's broken the into seven. seven. Oh, yeah. That's a holy number too. Seven. Virtues. Are there seven yeah, virtues? Seven, like seven, inversions seven. of the seven deadly sins? Yeah, yeah, there's seven sins and seven virtues. Each one has uh, a like like chastity and lust are like yeah. opposites. So the virtues. Yeah, seven heavenly. Virtues I would like to get a prism <laughs> and uh, blast some light behind me and split it into seven colors behind me. I'm not. I don't want to actually fly a flag behind me, but I'd love to get that rainbow visage behind me that looked cool i just but don't understand light. why christians have given up on that symbol well That's you know i think i think because christians weren't flying rainbow flags around before the alphabet people took it but but still i mean it's crazy to, it's crazy to think that for thousands of years the rainbow was mm -hmm. a, was a symbol of christianity mm -hmm. and then 20 30 years ago yeah 50 years ago really but you know popularized in the past couple decades 
all of a sudden now the rainbow is a symbol of of pride how did it become a a symbol of christianity well because after the the flood god sent a rainbow as a sign that he would not flood the world again okay yeah so it's like the sign of the end of the storm just in general yeah, the that's, storm that's is a way ended. of putting it that's i guess that's a way of putting it. it's like a promise specifically in this instance like a promise that he would not flood the world again like god's covenant with the earth but a lot of people are upset about that yeah about what the fact that they stole it or that no, he won't flood it again because i get again. it yeah a lot, of people, <laughs> a lot of people are like well you know who am i to question but it's like bro i will build the boat just let me know when <laughs> yeah the the subreddit noah get the boat <laughs> and it just it shows people doing horrifying things <laughs> That's dude hilarious. watch any random like I don't know, world star hip hop video out of I New know. York late at night, and you'll just be like, it's time, time to build the ark. <laughs> Is it raining? <laughs> yeah. Yep. I think we're passing through the torrid meteor store stream again. What is it, every 23,000 years? I don't want to mis- miscalculate things. Really? But apparently, yeah, apparently, the last time the earth was flooded was when we were passing through the torrid meteor stream. They call it the torrid because it's when we are viewing Taurus, the constellation, is when, they, when we're passing through the meteor stream. And those are the meteors that peppered the North American ice shelf and uh, the North Asian ice shelf oh, and yeah, caused a global flood. And apparently we're going to be passing through this again or are passing through it right now. Yes, yeah, September. It's amazing this confluence of events, how things are coming full circle, you may yeah. say. It peaks in November. Yep. So you better have your boat built by then. Oh, boy. Yeah, I let's pray so. that oh, we boy. don't strike one of these because it's, yeah. it's, it's madness and chaos out there. But yeah. I, there isn't a magnetic field. You know, there's a repulsive mechanism that Earth has, I think, that is is working synergy with us as long as we don't piss the planet off and i mean i'm not i'm not like a climate change activist. yeah i was gonna say hold on a second do where are we taking i do want to clean up the earth though I, because there's a way if we if we knock out our magnetic field with pollution or something yeah or like n- nuclear weapons it, we very well might get, might get hit by uh outer forces i let's jump to the story here so uh matt walsh tweeted earlier that uh, we're winning we're winning and that all the left has left is censorship I believe he is correct. He's correct. In this post from GLAAD, it says LGBTQ celebrities and allies call on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter to stop the flow of anti-trans hate and malicious disinformation (laughs) about trans healthcare. True allies do not profit from anti-LGBTQ hate. Y'all are losing. It's not going to happen. Sorry. The fact that Google just canceled a pride event shows your your cries are falling on deaf ears. So I'm not going to read the letter because it's stupid, but they're basically like, anybody who says we're wrong is actually hateful. That's mm, what they've been, nope. they've been saying that forever. Look at all these people. It's been their like one right. thing. Alan Cumming. Oh, he's a great actor, man. Well, oh, Boris and Goldeneye, dude. That guy's awesome. Allison Goldfrap. Who's that? Yeah, I have no idea. Amy oh. Schumer. Will we have to do it. We have yeah. to do it. <laughs> if Amy no, Schumer I, says I, so. I just don't think that there's any way around it at this point, boys. <laughs> all right. Who else we got here? Billy Eichner. Who's that? Oh, Billy Eichner. He just did the... The rom-com, the gay rom-com. <laughs> that bombed. Nobody wanted to watch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I'll say this too about his movie, Bros. Just simply put, yeah. if you make a movie whose target demographic is 0.04% of the population, don't be surprised when it sells tickets to only 0.04% of the population. Actually, do be surprised and call everyone a homophobe. That's what he did, didn't he? <laughs> That's right. Well, I don't know if he actually did it, but it, but it bombed. And they were like, it's not fair. Something was wrong. They're, they're, they, it should work. Well, Dylan Mulvaney's on there, believe it or not. Oh, oh, look. Oh, Bella yeah, look Ramsey, that. she's like 20. She's 21. <laughs> That's shocking. I'm, I'm surprised to see I can't believe Dylan that. Yeah. It's a cult. It's a cult. Judd Apatow. It's a good list Let's, for uh, us. Cal yeah. Penn. The thing is, like, I don't think it's possible for any of these names to disappoint me, you know? What if you saw yeah. your own name on there? I'd be like, wait, how did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll be seeing myself be out. May Whitman. That's disappointing. She's the voice of Katara in uh, Avatar. Well, what are they? What was the letter? I don't want to really want to read through all of it. Basically saying they, they, they want us banned. For right. oh, for for trans for for not supporting well, good child right. sex changes. Yeah, they want us banned. Yeah. Good, so they're right. Look, they're healthcare. People. They call it healthcare in the letter. I understand the position. Not everyone agrees that cutting young children uh, to to sever parts of them is necessarily healthcare. They 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 appeal to authority and say, well, the you know AMA says so. But my my point the whole time, which has not been refuted by a single person, other than your science is not real science, even though it is, 
is that you have several studies showing desistance without intervention is over 60%. Dude, that study needs to be. Well, also the Netherlands started doing it's this. It's more than the, one. In, it's in, multiple in, studies. Yeah. And the Netherlands started doing this in 1990, basically before, I mean, not just basically, but before any other country. And they've found that the suicide rate doesn't decrease. So, I mean, either the, the left this. has to say that Europe's medical system, and particularly the Netherlands medical system, Nordic Europe's medical system, got it wrong, and America's evil corrupt capitalist system got it right, or here's, they have here, to here, here's, here's my point for these people. If, let's use the lowest possible interpretation of desistance studies, 60%. If 60% of kids who are dysphoric receive no intervention mm -hmm. and then go on to lead normal lives... Why give them intervention if there is a 60% chance you will subject them to something which has a high rate of, of suicidality? Mm -hmm. it, it, it literally makes no sense. The, the, the odds are, in, are, are leaning towards let the kid grow up. Yeah. Go, I, at the very least, go through uh, 14 or 15 years old should be the minimum before they even consider doing any kind of social whatever. Mm -hmm. Because if a child is a sport and you do literally nothing, it's actually upwards of 98% right. of kids desist. They don't detransition. I'm saying if they never receive intervention in any way, they go on to lead normal lives. And not only that, but these numbers are from before we saw the massive spike in trans identifying youth. So this was before every other kid started calling themselves non-binary, which means now the desistance rate is almost certainly going to be much, much higher. The funny thing is, like, I guarantee you not a single one of these individuals knows anything about this. Of course, they don't know anything about anything. Right. About you, the assistance. Dylan Mulvaney. Zoe, Zoe Deschanel, Deschanel. Now that just breaks my heart. I didn't expect that one. Zoe. Oof. I knew, I knew something was going to hurt me Ta there. Ta uh, Taika Waititi. Yeah. He did that JoJo the Rabbit movie. Wanda, Wanda Sykes. Dang. Wanda. Is he Rosario, the guy who Rosario Dawson yeah. is surprising. He, he, he was made, in it. I thought, know, wasn't Luke, doesn't, doesn't Luke know Rosario? Didn't, uh, cool. Rosario, she... she she was with Cory Booker for a while, Senator Cory Booker. Like dating? Or yeah, just, dating. Well, you know, there you go. There you go. That'll do it. Yeah, it's I a cult, man. We got to use, if you want to get through to people like this, you should use, in my, my opinion, uh, Patrick Stewart's smaller words. So How like, dare you, the word Captain Picard? Desistance, Make it show I think, one. just blanket confuses people that aren't really highly intelligent. If they hear desistance, they're like, they don't know what that means. Um, dysphoric, that word's too much for people. They don't really... So the, if we could, you can use like simple language, like most of the kids that like child sex don't change. get child sex changes turn out to be not, you know, they, they turn out to be okay kind of thing. Yeah. Um, th that's a, that's a good kind of, well, I, mm -hmm. I just think it's sick what they're doing to the kids. And Agreed. I think, uh, Chloe Cole, she makes a really compelling case as to why you should not allow children to do this. You know, she went through the transition process when she was 16 and regretted it by the time she turned 18. But by by then, it was already too late for her. Now she has uh, she won't be able to have children and a lot of these different complications. And she speaks out so adamantly about how this is wrong and children shouldn't do it. Uh, and, you know, we need to take action probably at a federal level to ban puberty blockers, uh, ban these testosterone for dysphoria, treatments for, yes, for children. Yeah. Um, and also we just need to ban the surgeries and the procedures. It should not happen in our country. Uh, it's, it's wrong. And I feel like every single politician, uh, you know, that's in the Senate or in Congress, if a, a Muslim country, for example, was mutilating the genitalia of the youth, every single member would send, sign a resolution saying it's disgusting, it's barbaric and it's wrong. Meanwhile, here in our country, they're like, Oh, this is, so wonderful. And so, um, you know, I remember uh, about four or five years ago, there was a, a case in Minnesota where a Muslim doctor was illegally mutilating the genitalia of, right. of young girls. And everybody's outraged about that. But if you do it in the name of... Oh, the parents wanted it. Yeah. If you do, the parents brought the little girl, the little girl agreed, and the doctor performed the surgery. It's wrong. But the, but the left is in favor of parental rights, as they describe it. It's so wrong. But they were all outraged about that case. Why do you care so much? Because I want to have children one day, <laughs> and I don't want to have them grow up and thinking that they're the wrong gender because they're not, and uh, we can't let this happen. Amen. Well, I mean, it, it's it's this refrain we hear from them all the time. Whenever you point out anything disgusting is happening, why do you care so much? Why do you even know that that's happening? It's like, I mean, you can literally make that argument about any horrible thing that's happening in the world. Um, the only way to win the argument, Seamus, is to make sure nobody can have it is to make sure that nobody can have the argument but no, but, nobody but can care. Nobody can have, an, have the argument. 
what they're saying is yeah oh yeah yes it is yes, it is better yes. that no one talk about it yeah because if they do the results all go in the same direction exactly people clearly people will see that this is all made up nonsense then again you wonder how much of this look this is hollywood all right how much of it is these people going i really care about this cause and how much is it uh excuse me Yes, this is your manager calling. You're going to sign this. It's going to look really great for publicity. All right, yes, no, we're putting your name on it. Okay, gotcha. Boom. What does it say? Ah, it doesn't matter. It's going to look good. It's going to make you look good. You're going to be a star, darling. I think I, uh, I, think I have an, uh, an example for you from today. Yeah. Take a look at this from page six. Non-drinker Blake Lively accused of cash grab <laughs> as she launches the alcohol brand. I saw the story earlier. Everyone's like, yo, she talks about how she doesn't drink and she's selling booze. Mm -hmm. What? What, do you, what did you expect? Yeah. Like, let me tell you, I wake up in the morning and I drink Casper coffee. I thought you were going to say you wake up and drink booze. I was like, no, I drink Casper coffee. Like, we we blended our own coffee. It is delicious. It I is. like drinking it. Mm. I would like you to buy it. She does not actually want to drink. She wants you to drink. Mm. This is what these celebrities do. Like, I got no beef on her launching a product. She doesn't have to be a drinker to sell booze. I'm just saying, don't be surprised when they come out to you and they're like, for just 10 cents, you can save a pet in need. And then as soon as the camera wraps, they, they walk over and she's like, you know, throwing the, like bringing the cats to the youth for euthanasia or whatever. Like they don't care. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, it's all superficial. They're all just trying to promote something so that they can profit themselves. Obviously, in this instance, they're promoting something which is unbelievably barbaric, disgusting, horrible, something that people in a civilized society would not support. And yet here we are because we are increasingly less civil with each passing day. But yeah, ultimately, I agree. They don't really targeted, care about this cause. They don't know about it. They don't know about targeted anything. misgendering and dead naming of trans and non-binary people. They're saying that's got to be stopped. Yeah, like, dude, you cannot tell me what I can or cannot call you. If you want to have an a, an argument about harassment, there's a block button, there's a mute button. But I can understand. I can understand. There is a line in harassment, legally and criminally speaking. If you go out in public. And you're showing somebody's house or their place of work and you're insulting them and screaming at them in, in demeaning ways. The police are going to say you are now officially harassing this person. You have to stop it. Yeah, of course. Or otherwise you will be criminally charged. I agree with that as it pertains to social media. But if it is an open public conversation where I in my space, my Twitter account, I say, I think Ian's name is Ian and he's a guy and I'm going to keep saying it. That's not harassment. I'm expressing an opinion on a public figure. On a well, what if someone chases you down the street and says, hey, I'm going to gay bash you? That's a crime. Mm -hmm. Do you think it happened, though? We, we, it, literally, it obviously didn't happen. <laughs> Elliot, Elliot, Elliot Page's story is really, really sad. And, 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 you know, being one of the signatories on this, it shows oh. you the depravity of these people. Yeah. I will, I will, I will tell you the story. I, I feel there's a lot of people who will look at, say, like uh, Dylan Mulvaney, and then the feeling they get from seeing someone make a mockery of women, mm -hmm. they then project onto all trans people. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important that when you think about someone like Elliot Page, you should be having sadness in your heart, sympathy and empathy for this individual who was seriously abused in Hollywood yep. and became depressed, was self-harming, was hearing voices. All, this is all from the Elliot Page, LA Times like, like memoir story. This is a person who is in deep need of help. And the problem is, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, the, the people who, the, there's no one there to help these individuals because you'll, you'll either get conservatives being condescending and rude most of the time to any of any of these people. And then what happens is someone like Elliot Page can only go to the left. And what does the left do? Encourages self-harm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, it, that, that's why I'm like, when we were talking earlier about like Gizmodo, I'm like, I'll hire him. Yeah. Like the only only way you get people to stop doing bad things is give them an opportunity to do good things. Yeah, you I mean know. there has to be a road to repentance. You yeah, know, you absolutely, turn it around. Yeah, yeah. I think that um, people were showing some compassion towards. Uh, I guess I don't want to say compassion, but uh, most people have always been against the trans movement, and uh, period. Um, but people didn't have as much hatred in their hearts towards them until they started coming for the kids, and still they, until they started promoting. Hey, young, you know, five-year-old, you can transition genders and we are here for you. And that didn't, I feel like that has escalated so quickly and it's only a couple years old, this movement, and maybe it's been going on behind the scenes a little bit longer, but like it's becoming mainstream the last couple of years and it's turning people 
that were like, you know what, uh, I don't really care what you do as an adult, to uh, like, I'm against it altogether. The San Francisco Boys Choir, they made a song, um, We'll Convert Men, Your Children, men's, men's, yeah. choir, yes. men's Chorus. And it was, I think, an example of when sp- someone gets a hold of a large amount of power and then misuses it. Like they had the trans community, the trans movement was going strong when that came out. It was like finally for the first time reality, they have a voice. They're talking about it in public. It's mainstream conversation. And then they go and do something like that and piss off untold but that amount was, of that parents. Was, it was not the scary. trans community. It, no, was it was like some gay men's small course. group. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and was, it was like 50 guys. So but what are they the, saying? They're going to come, gay men are going to come for your kids? Like what in the they hell were they ex- thinking? Exactly in the song that they want to do. Mm-hmm. They want to They want to take your kids at, and bring them to hang out with, with strangers. They want to expose them to things parents trying to protect them uh, against. I mean, yeah, it's, 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 it's and evil. Those guys don't speak for all gay people, obviously. Yeah. But man, what an abuse. What a mistake. What a fumble. Yeah. When you have that kind of opportunity to create a conversation, and it's, I, it's, I, th- I don't think it was a mistake on their part. I think they knew exactly what they were saying and doing. I think they knew exactly what they were well, saying and doing. And I, I think what you were saying, it's, it is evil. And um, you know, uh, President Trump, he's like, I don't like the word woke. Well, because what's happening in our country, it's not just woke; it's sick and it's evil. What they're doing to our, to our kids isn't woke. It is sick and it is evil and it is demonic and it needs to be called that. And it's like woke is like a friendly word. People. Like, that's not harsh enough. President Trump is right. He's like, it is sick, evil, and demonic, and we need to call it out. Yeah. Yep, it is demonic. And speaking of which, and actually tying this back to something you mentioned earlier, Tim, about Elad and the the research that he was doing in the journalism, the good work he did publishing that video. Um, And it was a video, of course, where people were marching in in the streets at a pride parade saying, we're coming for your children, we're coming for your children. Um, NBC tried doing damage control on this by tweeting, the coming for your children chant has been used for years at Pride events, according to longtime March attendees and gay rights activists. Yeah, the who first, said it's one of many provocative expressions used to regain control of slurs. Yet the first, two, the first two paragraphs deny the chant even happened, and they said it was just one guy, and we don't even know if he was LGBTQ. No, it was more than one guy. You hear the, the whole video, crowd, they're, they're playing drums to it, and one, they're all shouting it. There's a, the, in the video, a girl goes, we're we're coming for your ch- and when she says children she winces and looks aside like even she's having a hard time saying it out loud mm-hmm. but she's just part of the cult part of that group and so she goes along she keeps marching uh, and it's just you know we're at a stage where NBC really thought they were doing damage control by saying oh but they've been saying that forever <laughs> yeah it's crazy that makes it so much worse this is the apocalypse well yeah christian i wonder if right, come, come another november. another prediction for christian the christian right man that's all it's uh come november the peak of the torrids mm-hmm. i are love gonna, that are they gonna cause a tidal shift or something and the oceans are gonna bubble up and just sweep <laughs> maybe what happened in the great flood was it was a strong gravitational pull that created a large tide that rolls over the whole planet at, at once before going back down have you seen that old simulation of what it was like when the moon was closer to the earth it's it, that's what happened. It was in, the moon used to be really oblong, going around really ovular around the Earth and pulling mm. the water like I don't know how many thousands of feet in the air, just covering land masses. Uh, no, we won't flood. We'll be okay. Where's what was the video? How do I find it? Uh, I saw it on Twitter, and it's just a simulation, a short like thirty or forty second simulation. Uh, might be that third video. I'm not third sure what that's, what's that one called. Mars no, wet that's to not dry it. animation. That's not it. And, and to be clear, if we don't address climate change, it will happen again. What was the story in the Bible during the apocalypse? What happens exactly? In the, you want me to break down the whole the whole book? If I, give me a three minute uh, elevator pitch because we're going to super chats. Uh, we, um, you want, like? I guess it's a story where Saint John is writing visions about the end of the world and the different things that he saw taking place in the the vision that he saw. Basically, okay. So yeah, the raining frogs, notoriously fro- difficult. No, the raining frogs. That's from uh, that's from Exodus. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is all from so, John's visions. Yeah. So so there's a number of things. It's a notoriously difficult read. Um, but yeah, there's a number of different prophecies laid out. Uh, it talks about the dragon sweeping um a third of the stars from heaven. The the Antichrist. It's there, there's a lot. I call it the apocalypse because it's... That's uh, what Catholics call it, actually, instead of revelation. The, the Greeks, the word in Greek means revelation or disclosure. Mm-hmm. It means mm-hmm. the same thing. And ultimately with the internet... Was this the, the video? Word, that's it, man. That's one of them. That's yeah, this is just 
how the moon affects it's gonna Earth happen tide. again it's gonna happen and again. when it was close man uh, maybe it's not maybe the exact one I, i've seen but, that's, but just imagine if like look at that. the water gets pulled 50 feet above sea level by some high gravitational force you could easily get a great flood yeah we're we're in a this earth is in, insanely vulnerable things are happening very slowly cosmologically but we're lucky to be alive that, that's the e like it's kind of it's kind of scary how simple it is we know the gravitational force will have this effect on water if some large body were to pass by close enough and could could cause i mean i doubt it because it would have to be as big as like the moon yeah. and be super close but yeah. you know the the biggest fear is a melt a, a large giant Solar melt storm. like from some sort of external heat but since most of the water the ice is already melted uh, from the last flood we're not really in any kind of danger of another giant flood i don't think although what happens is when the ice is removed so like if the ice caps were to instantly melt not only is there a huge flux of water now onto the earth's surface but the land that the ice was on top of that's being compressed down now goes pops up and when the land pops up earth elsewhere sucks down so that's why they say atlantis sunk into the ocean the the land mass not only did all the water melt but as north america rose you know western europe sunk and uh i don't know if there's enough ice on earth to produce that that phenomena at the moment so you're saying there won't be a great flood no i don't think so there could be a great steam i mean if if comets hit the earth and cause massive massive steam to go up and and then it could cause block out the sun and then we could go enter a cooling period which would cause massive amounts of ice which could mess up the the earth's magnetic field do you think ian that could. The, the the smog and the haze that's blanketing the entire east coast is actually bill gates evil plan to blot out the sun oh is that what it is it smells like plastic i don't know what it is yeah it does smell like plastic it's weird it's so nasty it's it even is. hard to breathe in here yeah it is yeah i gotta figure something out tonight because yesterday like last week i lost my voice and it started getting better then the haze came in and i woke up and i could not talk at all yeah i was getting hot earlier i was like wearing a t-shirt over my face all day seriously True. even yeah. indoors we walked in the studio earlier and you could see the haze in the room and i'm like what the yep. And we think it's because we have we have uh, uh, exposed vents because the ACs busted and it pulled air in or something, and so we had to like tape them up. And I'm just like, dude, it's so psychotically bad. It's going to be as bad tomorrow. It's, it's going to be a little here. bit better, but basically as bad. So what happened in John's visions after all the crazy stuff in the apocalypse? Are you familiar, Seamus? Well, yeah. I mean, I've I've read Revelation, but it's, it's a very difficult read. There are a lot of um, different breakdowns of it. I Taylor Marshall does a really good one uh, that I would recommend. Wouldn't it be funny if, you know, like the, the apocalypse is in November? <laughs> I, I mean, I think we're in it literally. It's going to be people are going to plug into the neural net and see each other's thoughts and talk about a great revelation. Not even that, like just all the it, re revelation is, is it prophecy? How would you describe it? Is it like predictive? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yes. There are, there people, are some, there, there are some like modernists who will make the argument that this is, this is describing things that have already happened and it's talking yeah. about Nero, but right. yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I believe it's prophecy. What about all, like, is, is there a time frame for how long these things are supposed to happen? So there's a book that I've been reading called Trial, Tribulation, and Triumph, and it's a massive text, and it sort of discusses how long um, a lot of these things take and, like, how, how long the stage is set for the Antichrist. But the basics of it is whenever you hear people say things like, oh, the, um, you know, the Antichrist is coming next year. I mean, the events that set the stage for the Antichrist to, like, even take power with the one world government forming, I mean, it's stuff that would take years. Mm -hmm. so maybe it's happening yeah I can well see i mean i guess if, if you believe that sell, we're gonna have the mark of the beast if, yeah. if you believe that we're like actually leading up to the end of the world i guess you could say in some sense the like events that will result in in the apocalypse are already in motion it, but i guess is, they always have been is it the end of the world though uh well at the end of time we believe that god will end up recreating the world after the resurrection so there will be a new world but yeah the world as we know it so wait wait so, all right so so what happens when the world ends like literally like not revelation i mean like literally the point where it's just like okay this is at the end of the world it's like time stops hmm. Do the people who still live there just get like frozen like yeah and then so, like all yeah. the good pious christians flood up naked to heaven well th so there would be um a final judgment and then there's a public judgment where the dead are all raised and then there's a public judgment where people see everything that ever happened and so it's going to take quite a while. Yeah. And God, so basically God judges everyone in front of everyone at the, at the public judgment. Dude. So we oh, believe man, there's a private so judgment when you first die. And then at the end of the world, after the resurrection, there's going to be the public judgment so, where people like, are going to see all of it. Yeah. You're, it's, yeah. it's, it's bad enough 
you know, you're worried about your web history. Mm. <laughs> no, it's going to be it's going to be everything. So you're right? saying the it's going to be everything. The dead rays. And so, yeah. So, okay, so I can see that when they're trying to recreate people's parents with artificial intelligence, so you can call your dad after he's passed. Like that's the dead mm -hmm. coming back. But we actually believe in a resurrection of the body. Like the body will actually come back. People will rise like, from the grave. God will bring everybody back thousand, and there will be a judgment. And like then a, like a 1,500 year old corpse mm -hmm. in the coffin will like reform and like come out of the ground or what? Yeah, I'm not sure how he's going to do it. I'm not sure what God will do to make that happen, but everyone will return in their body. The dead will be raised. There will be a final judgment. And then if the weed is separated from the chaff and you're either in the new, the new creation, the new world and heaven with God forever, or you're in hell for all of eternity. I got to say, if, you, if, if, if God's going to make a point, 1500 year old skeleton bursts through the ground with bony hand <laughs> comes out and then the flesh starts regrowing and coming back and then they just like are back to normal and they're like all right let's get to it you know what i mean just make sure People it's not like, a deep thing because otherwise it's like, or something. what do you what do you expect like just it there's a blink and then the person's standing above their grave i think it's going to happen on the internet it's going to be virtual oh, all this okay. stuff of like the dead rising and, and speaking with the dead i think it's going to be like a ver and what'll happen is you'll be able to live so many lifetimes in one second on the, on the with the neural net you'll have like a full lifetime and then you'll come back and it'll only be like five seconds have passed or a minute and you'll look around the world and it'll be like time has stopped everyone in the real world is not even doing anything as i live an entire life in the blink of an eye you're still sitting in your chair just like you you were 70 years ago so this world i can see that meaning time, how time has stopped well if it's a deep fake tim will most definitely be calling it out nobody calls out that's right deep fakes quite like tim pool that's a fact all right everybody we're gonna go to super chats if you haven't already would you kindly smash that like button subscribe to this channel share the show with your friends and go to timcast.com become a member because we're gonna have a members only uncensored show coming up for you at just about 10 p.m on the front page of timcast.com you don't want to miss it it's gonna it's gonna be fun and silly not so family friendly. Last night we talked about bonus holes. I'll leave it at that. But uh, let's read what y'all have to say. We have Nathan Picor. He says, best wishes to Mr. Bocus. My friends, I have terrible news. So uh, over the past seven or so months, just about eight months, we have been giving Mr. Bocus, the cat, uh, a medical treatment, including IV fluids and uh, um, red blood cells, uh, uh, horm uh, kidney hormone to produce red blood cells, as well as uh, Ian got him stem cell treatments they did not work well i should say it, it worked as long as they did so mr bocus was a street cat he was uh we, we adopted him from a pet uh, from a it was like a pet smart or something and we uh, only found out in december or so that he has a congenital heart defect and undersized kidneys likely due to malnourishment he's a street cat and so uh his kidneys began failing his chronic kin chronic kidney disease normally affecting older cats and he's only four and a half about five now I, I believe he may be five years old and um, he was dying in December. I made a farewell video because they thought he had about a week left. The emergency treatments we got him prolonged his life this long, but uh, something happened. Typically every morning when I wake up, we hear yelling at uh, I hear yelling at my bedroom door because Mr. Bocus uh, is demanding that we wake up and he wants us to wake up earlier than we actually like to wake up. And so I wake up and I open the door. He runs in and he wants to drink water out of the toilet or something. But we, we, we give him fresh water. He has, he has fresh water, but you know, cats. And um, two days ago, he did not wake us up. And so we got up, went to the door and I opened it. And he was just sitting in the living room. And I'm like, I didn't think much of it. And then yesterday when he was getting his fluid treatment, he had curled into his carrier, which was flipped over in the corner and was hiding and would not come out, which is indicative of illness in cats. Uh, cats like to go off and hide when they're about to die. So we brought him to the vet where he stayed overnight for treatments. And it looks incredibly bad where this may be, I, I don't even know if he'll make it through the night. His heart is literally in, in failure and he's wheezing and struggling to keep his eyes open. His heart is unable to keep up. His red blood cell count is half of what it should be. His uh, blood urine nitrogen levels are double what they should be. His kidneys don't work. The problem is the treatment for the, for the, for the blood problems causes heart problems and the heart's already failing. So there's nothing we can do at this point. And the vet actually recommended euthanasia to which I said, no. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who think that the appropriate thing to do is just humanely put him down. I, I don't know that's the right thing to do because you know, the, the argument is his quality of life is bad and he's suffering and he's not a dog. You know, people like to assign human emotions to animals. It may work for dogs to a certain degree. Like when a dog is sick, and scared the dog wants you with it cats are very different cats are, are are little anarchists 
They actually want to go hide and be alone. So you try and figure out the balance. Over the past couple of days, Mr. Bocas has been trying very much so to sleep on our laps. So, you know, we want to be there if he wants us to be there. And I also kind of want to respect if Mr. Bocas wants to go curl into the corner and, you know, go out the way a cat wants to go out. I want to respect that too. So we're doing our best. We'll figure it out. But thank you for the super chat. That's the update on Mr. Bocas. And um, just before we started the show, I, I didn't think he was going to make it to 7 p.m. His, his, he couldn't keep his eyes open. His, you can see his heart is going crazy, desperately trying to pump blood, and, it, and it's failing. It's got a clot. And Yeah, Kim brought him back at about 6, and uh, everyone was excited to see him because they had the news already. He jumped out of his carrier, went and got a bunch of water, ate a bunch of food. But I think the attention was really kind of pushing him in his heart. So if anyone listening that's in contact with Bucko, treat him like a flower, a beautiful flower. You don't want to pick the thing. Yeah. You just want to appreciate it. You know? And uh, we'll be there for him. He's going to be okay. Yeah. But the but we'll but see him again, man. The plan is we're going to get another cat that uh, uh, I believe he's a tabby, and we're going to name him Bocus Two. <laughs> yeah, Bocus Number Two. It's nice yeah. name. Yeah, Bucko got a got a bad role. Reference. Simpsons reference. I love it. He played yep, his hand well. It. Yeah, you know, I uh, hate to think what his life would have been like if we did not adopt him from oh, that shelter. They life. may have just put him down. Mm. So, you know, the vet said they can't treat him because the kidney treatment d destroys the heart and the heart treatment destroys the kidneys and they're both in trouble. And uh, we even talked about doing a kidney transplant and they're like, his heart's too bad. He can't do it. If, if he, if, but this is, this is, look, a cat grows up on the street eating garbage and uh, he's lucky to have had as good a life as he did. In fact, probably one of the best cat lives a cat could ever have. So perhaps as they say, a candle that burns twice as bright lasts half as long. And if his destiny was to die in the gutter, but he was brought into one of the greatest places a cat could ever live, then he maximized, he, he maximized his opportunity. And we, uh, we appreciate Mr. Bocas and everything he did for all of us, uh, except peeing on the floor. He did that a lot and we had to clean it. That but, was the you know. worst part. I wanted him in my room to give him my warmth and to be with him, like my energy, you know, to heal him. And he just kept peeing on the fucking floor man like i love you bucko but what the fuck dude like i can't i can't have him peeing all over my house <laughs> what do you it's a wild cat i love the guy but god just peeing everywhere just wouldn't stop peeing bucko yeah, yeah. In your bucko's next a life great little guy, it's because man. it's Hold because he's a street cat. cat we love Bucko. Yeah. he doesn't and so uh you know we brought him here today and we were upstairs right when we got we, we were coming in right before the show and he walked over to his litter box and we were like, okay, this is, this is good. You know, he's not peeing on the floor, but he okay. stood in a litter box with his butt aimed out of the litter box and just peed right onto the yeah. floor. <laughs> Sounds like him, dude. I'll post a picture. I, I'm, the first picture I ever took of him was in 2019. I'm going to post it on Instagram later. Yeah. You know? It's sad seeing him wheeze with all the smoke, too. It's like just so much worse. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's real bad yeah. right now. We, the chickens are all in a special little facility. I guess one chicken got away and ran oh my God, and jumped funny. in the bushes. Yeah, Did they rescue it? I don't know. I saw it right before I came to the show, but I assume so. <laughs> that chickens yeah. are so dumb. Yeah. But uh, I'm hoping Mr. Bocas has a couple days left in him and then we'll go find another cat. The idea being that the spark of Bocas, he can teach maybe a baby kitten a couple things before he passes and we'll carry on his, his Bocas legacy in Bocas too. <laughs> All right, let's grab uh, some more Super Chits now that y'all have heard the update on Mr. Bocus. All right. Kalishnabob says, any chance of getting some instant coffee out of Cast Brew? I don't know. I don't know if we can do that just yet. I do know that Cast Brew is going to have, uh, we are preparing to launch protein, I think protein MCT, and um, I think we're doing an electrolyte. And then I think Chris was uh, adamant on us getting like... Um, lion's mane mushroom stuff or so something. good dude i do an oh, extract yeah. of that it's so good so we, that, that might i'm like i don't want to do supplements in that regard where i have like brain blast and like a whole bunch of different things i'm like i just want protein powder for me that, that's kind of how i view it like the coffee we made it's coffee i like and we want to have a couple things that i enjoy that i think that we could sell to other people uh i want to do mct and protein because i literally want to just put it in my own shaker and go and skate and then drink it and have it uh and so you know i'm not going to be doing any of the mushroom Oh, you should try so lions, like, man. It's pretty cool. I mean, I don't know. It's not it's, my thing. A lot of it's psychosomatic. You just take it, you eat it, and you're like, wow. But I'm, it, it's, I, from what I've read, it's one of the greatest mushrooms on earth to eat. But we will have more stuff at caspru.com coming up. I don't know about instant coffee, though. Um, I'm not sure about that. It seems too far outside of our wheelhouse. Yeah, it's, it's also just a, it's a completely different thing. Yeah. Maybe, like, we're, we have K-Cups coming out. I'm really excited about. Mm -hmm. So. All right, let's grab some more uh, Super Chats. 
D. Wolfman says, what should you do if you've tried several different careers, sports and hobbies and find you have no natural talents and don't work well in the woke corporate paradigm? Red I, balloon. If at first you don't succeed, work. try, try again. Try yeah, again. Well, did he, he, or, did he, did he say he has no talents or no natural talents? What is his? Alex has a solution. Look up redballoon.work. Oh, it's yeah, a, it's a awesome new company that's connecting uh, non-woke job seekers with non-woke employers. Uh, if you ever feel like you don't uh, aren't able to express yourself uh, in your place of work, you can use this job board to find somewhere uh, that will respect your values. And uh, I mean, what I love about this is that uh, the woke movement is creating uh, solutions. Uh, you know, the free market and the, the great geniuses that love our country are creating solutions to uh, the boycotts. We're going to create uh, companies that you can shop with your values at. And then also you can uh, find a, uh, a company that will support your values in the workplace if you want to work there. Redballoon.work? Yes. Like it. We talked about them last night. Blave Kaiser says, Ian, I love you, but watch the documentary Uncle Tom 1 and 2. Before the 1960s, the black populace was skyrocketing upward. There were black factories, schools, tons of small businesses, and more. I remember seeing the first one. It was really, really great. Herman Cain, dude, that guy's story is incredible. Mm -hmm. Hardworking guy, believed in himself, accomplished so much. Yeah. Amazing. No, he was great. And then everyone on the left laughed really hard when he died I've heard, so, so so brutal. I've heard an argument that before the integration of the black and the white population in the 60s and 50s or whenever that was uh, that they were very strong enforced black communities that and they were doing very well and once the segregation started there became a, a hierarchy in these new segregate desegregated rather the desegregation that, that, this is the the critical race theory argument critical race theorists argue that when uh, pre -segre during segregation the black community had its own econ economy and infrastructure, and it was successful, despite the fact that the white economy and infrastructure was larger. With the end of segregation, it forced the smaller economy into the larger one, which then got crushed. Smaller, small business owners who are successful in the black community now had to take jobs working for white white owned factories and things like so that. So that may have happened. I don't think that that is a reason for segregation. I don't think that that's like, this is why we should never s integrate races. No, it's just a natural phenomenon of integrating, you know, two cultures uh, of different economic strata. All right. Raybert G. Stanbert Jr. says, Tim, I'd like some advice. Looking to move to West Virginia, but I remember some places with bad policies you've mentioned. Would like to be near the coffee shop too. Also, Destiny was losing his mind over Emma the other day. I don't know exactly what happened. All I know is uh, someone sent me a message saying that um, he was watching the video yeah. and then like a minute in, he was like, oh, he's like, oh, geez, I don't know if I'm able to do this. Yes. Oh, oh because of what Emma was saying? Basically. Yeah. yeah. He's not a fan, so we'll say. <laughs> I like Dustin. I think he's fantastic. Yeah, good Looking dude. forward to having him back here. He's, he's funny. Yeah. And uh, he's, he's kind of ruthless. Like he just calls yeah. people out. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, so uh, what, 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 what was that other part? Oh, yeah. Bad, uh, West Virginia. Um, my, here's my strategy. Can we just get everybody to move to like Berkeley County and like Martinsburg, West Virginia, so we can just affect po policy in a positive direction? Yeah. That's that's the place to be. Technically, it's not, but it's kind of the front line. Jefferson County, which is uh, it leans slightly right, but it's a, is a bit mixed because a lot of D.C. people go there to get away from their own bad policies. You'd think would be more woke, but it's actually less. A lot of uh, right wing nut jobs, self described, living on the mountain, right. and. Uh, you know, for instance, like the, the, the cops out there, they know us, they're, they're good people, they're fans, they do a good job. The, uh, uh, the county explicitly banned, you know, these, these adult shows that it, for, for people from being children to these adult performances. But Berkeley County is like the woke area for some reason. So that's where people need to uh, move to and then start voting to uh, uphold uh, their values and all that stuff. All right. Selmark says there needs to be more outrage over the fire. I don't know what you do about it. I mean, we can be mad, but like, what are you going to do? Build a, build a big 200 foot wall to block the wind? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And Canada I, will pay for it. And Canada will pay for it. <laughs> It'd be funny if Trump actually said that. That'd be great. Scientech says, just won the VA lottery and got my 100% disability sharing the wealth. Thanks for all you do. Thank wow, you. Wow. Congratulations. Is that like a big win? Are you like a billionaire now? And thank you for your service. The, I was going to say by a boat, but I, but I remember being told that the, um, the joke is the two best days in a boat owner's life are the day you buy the boat and the, <laughs> the day, you, day sell you sell it. it. Yeah. And then uh, the best boat is the one your, friends, your friend owns. Yeah. 
But, uh, you know, maybe, maybe get a helicopter. There you go. <laughs> Those are fun. David Toronto and the Super Chat, just for Bocus. Really do appreciate it. We got, you know, I want to figure out what the uh, appropriate thing for Mr. Bocus is when he does pass. I was thinking Viking funeral. What is that like? He burn his body, send it out on a boat and light it on fire yeah, kind fire of Fire a flaming arrow into the boat. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll get like a boat. We'll go out into international water and then put a little thing down and then fire the f little, a little flaming arrow into a little, a little boat and have a Viking funeral for Mr. Bogus. Yeah. I guess you get to pick a Or we just day. dig a little grave for him. Yeah. You know, and put yeah. a little... Other words, whatever you do. We, tomb, we'll get a tombstone made. Sad. He's, a, he's an awesome little yeah, lad, dude. Yeah, I've still yeah, got this like belief that he can survive for a long time. He, 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 that, that week in December, I thought he was going to die. He was struggling to stand up. He couldn't, couldn't even get in the litter box and it was bad. And he was shaking. And then we got him that medicine and he looked like he, he was back to normal. I even got, even a, like three weeks ago, I was playing with a little fake bird and he was running around and jumping and stuff. And yeah. He was in great spirits glad. five days ago. Yeah. yeah. But I will say two years ago, we'd play for like, 20 minutes of him chasing the bird around and jumping and doing flips in the air. And this time he made a couple of leaps and then laid down and fell on his side and just gave up. I wonder if up. this air is messing him up. Definitely. This air right now definitely is messing up everybody. It's messing me up. And I'm, yeah, a, I'm, a, I'm a human who's taller yeah. than the cat. Yeah, the heaviest stuff falls to the ground. And they, some, Kellen just messaged me and said that there's uh, evidence of formaldehyde and benzene in the smoke. I don't know if this is yeah. real or not. Thanks, know. Kellen, for the message, though. Confirmed, according to MJ Truth Ultra on Twitter. You know, <laughs> I don't uh, know about that from one. Rumble and CIFFC. C -I, I wouldn't be surprised, dude. This stuff is 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 it's gross, dude. Hurting. Yeah, yeah. It sucks. I could not talk this morning. I was bad. It doesn't smell like like wood smoke. No, no. It's something else. Yeah. Who knows? It, it could just be that, you know, the trees burn and then go up and it collects stuff and creates a clump of garbage mm -hmm. going over the cities and then washing the garbage from the cities and everything into us. I don't know, man. It's bad. Yeah. Let's grab some more super chats. Super chats. People are saying, like, people in Montana and Idaho and California. If I've been through that smoke, too. This sucks. This really sucks. Yeah. So. Next, the Slayer says, what is your opinion on introducing an abortion ban with a similar life to affirmative action? The ban being needed until a proper stigma is established and rolled back that point with a sunset clause. How long would it take to establish stigma? I have no idea. A law banning abortion? I think, abortion? Is that I think uh, abortion should be regulated at the federal level. Congress needs to enact it, not the Supreme Court. And uh, my position on it would be like, I don't know. What did Destiny say? Destiny said 20 weeks, right? 20 to 24. So. But he says when, when um, it's capable of being conscious, basically. Mm. I, 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 I actually agree a, a decent amount with that. I would argue, however, the consciousness is less material to me. But I understand his point. My, my position is more of like an authoritarian versus libertarian thing, which puts me at it should probably be banned after a certain amount of time federally. The federal government has a right to uh, uphold the Constitution. The Supreme Court probably does need to issue a ruling on that. It does need to be regulated by, con uh, legis codified by Congress, however. But it's a 14th Amendment argument outright, the right to life and equality under the law. So, Well, the left, they like to say that Republicans are radical on abortion, but in, uh, many on the left are actually becoming the radicals on abortion. I mean, it's, it's, uh, are the radicals. They went from pro-choice, many of them, maybe most of them, from pro-choice to pro-abortion. And, you know, when Roe v. Wade was overturned, you had these videos of these girls just who were pregnant taking abortion pills and mocking pro-life protesters. And it was sick and it's demonic. And you have a lot of these TikTok videos of girls who are pregnant and then they go to a pregnancy or a, a, like a Planned Parenthood and then they say, OK, problem taken care of. And the video gets like six million views. And so they are celebrating abortion now. They are the radicals on it. And uh, I think Republicans need to uh turn the tables on them and start pointing them out for being the radicals. The real hydro. You know, you love him. He says, Tim, wasn't Tim cast sued for defamation. And from there on, you guys have been an opinion piece and not news. Incorrect. That is not true. Uh, we, unless I'm forgetting something, I, we've never been sued for defamation. And um, we're uh, like Tim cast IRL is an opinion show, but that's because we, we are literally and overtly an opinion show. If you go to uh, timcast.com, what you'll see is, any segment, 
involving like me talking or pop culture crisis or inverted world, those are labeled opinion because they're quite literally opinion commentary shows. And then news are labeled something else. This has nothing to do with defamation lawsuits and has everything to do with uh, standards in journalism. You'll notice that, say, the New York Times or USA Today or Washington Post, they, Washington Post does this all the time. They publish opinion pieces and don't label them opinion. That is a violation of standard journalistic ethics. Tim Cast News does the opposite. News is labeled news. Opinion is labeled opinion. So, uh, yeah, we, we, our news is news. When Elad films a video and just writes, marchers chant, we are coming for your children, quote, that's it. That's news, not opinion. That, it's a video of it literally happening. Unka says, y'all should have a show that's just Hannah Claire reading the news as an anchor. <laughs> I think that would be a regular watch for a lot of people. We have discussed such a thing. We're just waiting for Free Damistan to, uh, to get uh, finalized. The Real Hydra with another one. He says, Tim, much better watch. But bro, get a Sapphire Crystal watch, such as uh, an, an Omega or Rolex, and you won't worry about it breaking when being active. That is a, that's a good point. So um, I have an Egard watch. Egard's a great company. They put out these commercials in support of American values. And that actually is Sapphire Crystal. And it's amazing. It's a self-winding watch. It's got a little wheel in it. So as you wear it, you move around, it spins, winding up its spring, so it just keeps running, and it's got a really awesome face. And then I also have this one, uh, this is a Holtzkern watch, and I must admit, for the longest time, I was like, watches, why would anybody wear a watch these days? Smart watch I get, but why would you wear a regular watch just for the time when you have your phone? And then, I actually, I was like, you know, it's nice. yeah. I'll get a watch, seriously? There are more circumstances where a quick glance at your wrist is much easier than pulling out your phone, clicking the button, and putting it away. And there are circumstances I've found in my life where I can't be pulling out my phone. It, you know, and it, it's just, it, it really is interesting. There are circumstances where it's like, I'm playing, my video, I'm playing a video game, for instance. Mm -hmm. I was playing Final Fantasy 16, and I'm just looking up and I go like this, boom, time. And I was like, that actually really does work better than mm -hmm. if I'm gonna check my phone, I gotta pause and then pull the phone out and take but, a look and put it back. I like it. By the way, did you confirm if you're on story mode in I am not on story mode. I am on action mode. I'm not gonna buy it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Really? It's uh, C plus B minus. Yeah, it's too bad. So I'll tell you what my concerns are with it. The time jumps. Yeah, that's about it. Are Other there, than that, I'm having a, I'm having a lot of fun with are it. Are there diverse characters in the game? No, <laughs> actually, no. It's like it's all British people. It's all just white British people. Weird. Yeah, and um, yeah, it's basically like. The crusade, it's like, it's like uh, Middle Eastern people versus British people for what? the most part. I it's, mean, look, I don't want to spoil, spoil. It's, it's not so much that, but everyone's British. Hmm. Everyone has a British accent. That's <laughs> so <laughs> weird. Yeah. I don't know. I, I like the game. I'm having fun playing it. It actually is a, a, a bit of a blast. Uh, I like the gameplay mechanics. I like old school RPGs, turn-based, but I know that that's not been Final Fantasy for a minute or whatever, so. Yeah. We're talking but, about Final Fantasy 16, by the way, everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't yeah, think yeah. anyone would mention that, but... Oh, okay, yeah, Final Fantasy 16. Yeah. But that's what I like about the watch. Like, if I'm playing, I can just go like that. I'm like, I got the joysticks, and I'm like, bam, bam, bam. I'm like, what time is it? Okay, there we go. It actually does work out really well. Especially at the casino when they don't let you uh, bring out your phone when you're mm. sitting around. Watches do work. Also, you can be talking to someone and go, uh-huh, and look at your watch. It's fantastic. A friend of mine has uh, sunglasses. I'm probably going to end up getting a pair of these that have a, an augmented screen inside that plug into your phone, which you can keep in like your backpack or in your <laughs> pocket. And he says he loves it. He's yeah, I, I had one of those uh, 12 years ago. It was called Google Glass. Apparently, they're good now. <laughs> they're good now, huh? Yeah. You Google can play video Glass. games on them and stuff. I thought you were going to say plugs into the back of your brain or something. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Maybe give it a couple of years. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes, it will. Let's grab some new uh, super chat. Uh, Vosh says, you've never heard of gold frap. Ride a white horse, strict machine, ooh la la, great music, bad politics. I absolutely know of the music of gold frap, yeah. but just because I see the name gold frap doesn't mean I assume that Allison gold frap is the person from the music group gold frap, though it makes sense. That's why I said, who is Allison gold frap? You know, but yes, uh, those songs were like 2001 or something, 2002. Yeah, early thousands, late 90s. Yeah, I like those songs. Old school. Zizek says, Greta Thunberg went to Kiev and met Zelensky today to discuss a pressing environmental issue, saving the endangered German leopard. Is that for real? I know she went there. I saw what? those videos, but like, was it really about that? Mike, that? Mike Pence also went to Ukraine today. Oh, yeah. How about that? Huh. Dude, I'm sorry. Deep state. Millennials are just split on supporting war. You're not winning us back over on this one. You needed to stop Ron Paul 20 years ago. They didn't do it. 
Now you have a whole generation of kids who were online and heard some old guy be like, why are we going to war? Why are we letting them print money? And then they were just like, that's a good point. Now we're all in our 30s. And you're like, why are they voting for Trump? Because we agreed with him. Because he made a bunch of points that were good. That's the guy they should have censored. But they were way too late. You got to stop the guy from planting the seeds. Now all, the, all these kids who grew up on the internet and heard that anti-war message, it's actually a combination of, it, it was liberals against Bush. They wanted to win. And then it was Ron Paul around the same time. Everybody opposed to this stuff. And now a whole generation opposes it. Mike Pence going to Ukraine? That's endearing himself to no one. Yeah. He's not going to get any votes off of that. We'll grab a couple more here. Robert Sunderland says, Seamus' humor is so dry tonight, even another flood couldn't wet it. <laughs> Bro is straight full of beans tonight. Oh my gosh. Extra Ecclesium. Uh, what is that? Extra Ecclesium Nula Solace. Outside of oh. the church, there's no salvation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then he said, God wills it. Base Deus Vault. He actually says Deus Vault. Deus Vault, yeah, of course, of course. All right. Roger, Robert Roger says, uh, wait, actually, that was a, it just jumped on me. It did, yeah. There was a there was one for Seamus. Robert Roger. Mm -hmm. I thought it was Robert Roger who asked that one too. Where did it go? This is what I hate about YouTube. Okay, it was um Matthew Fetig. He says, Seamus, I've never been a religious person, but you being on the show has slowly convinced me to give it a chance. We'll be looking for a church for my family. Ah, oh, dude, I'm so glad to hear that. Look at that this guy. Very happy to Converting people on this show. <laughs> well, thank you for giving me the platform. But, uh, but we, yes, please seek out a a good Catholic church in your area, but make sure make sure it's a good one because let me tell you, there are some where you will get, uh, I would say, some less than sound teaching. How do you, and where you would well? Also, so this let, let's uh, like if if that if the church if they offer a traditional Latin mass there, even if that's not the one you go to, like that's probably going to be a good we, church. We gotta grab this one last super chat. Mm -hmm. Laura Loomer asks Tim, "What do you think about the DeSantis campaign press secretary?" Using a burner account named Max to attack Trump supporters. Is really? that is that true? Is Dude, that you gotta true? look this I haven't up. Heard anything like this. Yeah, you gotta look this is up. It, is it confirmed? is it confirmed though? Well, look, because I've seen there's, some there's some reports, stuff. and Loomer has been doing a phenomenal job on exposing this, and people want to write Loomer off, but uh, she's right a lot more than she's wrong, and she's been doing this a long time, and so there actually is an audio file that um, Loomer released comparing this anonymous account Max's voice. Mm -hmm to um, Brian Griffin's voice, who is Ron DeSantis' sure. press secretary. And I'm not saying it's definitely Brian Griffin, but the voices are similar. Uh, there's a weird connection b uh, between Brian Griffin's previous job uh, for a group called the Maccabee uh, Task Force. I, I, think, I think the most compelling thing was um, an email was sent about Rebecca Jones, and yep. then a minute later, this account yeah. tweeted out the actual yeah. footage that had been received. Hundred percent. But I, I don't know if it's confirmed. That's why I, I, I don't really have much to say. But about there's timestamps on it. So like Jeremy Redfern, who works for Ron DeSantis's governor's office, he received video footage uh, of you know Rebecca Jones and her son, and then a minute after Jeremy Redfern sends an email saying thanks, confirmed we got the video. Max Nordo, this burner account, who alle allegedly some people say works with. Jamie Redfern, he had this video out one minute after. And so, so at the very least, it could be that this anonymous Twitter user has access to the DeSantis, DeSantis team or something like that. Yeah. Some people are saying it's operated by the entire press team. Some people are saying it's specifically. Uh, I think we got to be careful. Got to be careful of that. I want, I want to see proof. Yeah. I, I, mean, we, I don't, I, you know, here's my thing. It would be very, very easy for them to delete that video they put up where they lied about Trump. Super, super easy. They could just delete it, put up a message being like, we shouldn't tweet it out. Sorry about that. And that and that. But they won't do it. And so that that's the wall I'm at. I'm like, all this stuff wouldn't surprise me. But uh, we'll wrap it up there because we're going to have a members only show coming up in just a few minutes over at TimCast.com. So go to TimCast.com, click join us, become a member. And if you're a member for at least six months or you sign up at the $25 per month level, you can submit questions and actually ask us and our guests questions. So that'll be a whole lot of fun and uh, not so family friendly. You can follow the show at Timcast IRL. You can follow me personally at Timcast. Alex, do you want to shout anything out? Go to DonaldJTrump.com. Buy this t-shirt. Not guilty. Who knows how many more indictments are going to come. They're going to do everything they can to stop this man. But it's an awesome t-shirt. It says 45, 47, not guilty. Donald Trump's mugshot. And uh, stand with DJT. 
Right on. Seamus Coglin. I have a YouTube channel called Freedom Tunes. We release a cartoon every single week. We released one today. All right. It's a super funny one. I was very happy. This one actually took two weeks to animate. It was a little bit of a a little bit of a longer video and more visually descriptive. So I think if you guys go over there, you check that out, you're going to like it. I'm Ian Crossland. Follow me at Ian Crossland anywhere on the internet. And when you follow Alex on Twitter, it's at Alex Brusowitz. Good to see you again, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for being a part of this grieving process for me tonight. I, I got a little emotionally overcome. It happens. I love the man. Bucko, you're in my thoughts and prayers. I love you guys. And uh, let's move. turn this over to Serge Duprea. You say my name incorrectly every time. What is it? It's uh, it's Dupria, but it's Dupri on on Dupria. 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 Thanks. Yeah. I thought it was Dupre Dupre the first time I met you. No, it's Dupria. Okay. Dupria. Serge Dupria. <laughs> Anyways, I'll get it right. Uh, I'm Serge.com on the internet. Uh, that was a good one. Yeah, Bucko's a good cat. I feel bad about the guy, but uh, he'll go to a better place. Anyways, see you guys later. We will see you all over at TimCast.com. Thanks for hanging out.